Uh, we live. Uh, we live. Seems good. All right. Uh, so let's continue with finishing this build up. Um, I think we've figured out a pattern that is going to work here. Um, most likely. Oh, we don't need to copy this part now. Let's get rid of that, and that, and that, and that, and that, and this. Alright, so now we don't have any of that clutter lying about to confuse us if it gets copy-pasted. Um, put this up here. And I think if we just copy-paste like this, not everything is going to... Oh, this is... This is where it is rotated and mirrored, so it doesn't continue down that way. Okay, cool. Uh, so this goes here, I think. Let's just get rid of these. And... And this bit's going to change a little bit. It seems like we don't actually have an output um, for contaminated cosmic water here. That's unfortunate. I hadn't noticed that. Uh, hmm. I'm pretty sure we can move this whole thing down a tile. Um, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. And this side as well, excuse me. All right, so Highland substation is going to be in the way in this instance. I'm not sure exactly what we can do about it this time. So normally this would go here. Uh, we can't fit an underground pipe through this. That's too far apart now. Don't know where that onesie got copied from, actually. Let's put this back where it belongs. Uh, the inserters are all messed up as well. Okay, let's start from scratch with those. That goes there. Uh, this one has to go here. These ones are fine, these ones are not. I suppose I could make a little exception and... Um, connect these two. That's probably going to be the most elegant way to deal with this. Looks kind of weird. That looks slightly less weird, I guess. How about this? That seems fine. Alright, and then we put underground pipe here. Alright, let's check that all of these have outputs. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, let's be a bit more consistent. Down the bottom each time. That is connected. Let's just make sure that whatever we put on this belt is going to get through. And apparently not. Oh, wait, there they are. One, two, three. Fantastic. All right, so need, we need to do the same thing on the other side. Uh, for whichever resource gets pushed out to the side like this, which happens to be contaminated cosmic water. Um, start by removing these. And then I'm going to just try copy-pasting... Maybe not that much. Uh, try copy paste flipping this part. That's looking pretty good, I think, but these appear to be in the way. Oh, I see. I think. Uh, well, let's just try putting that there and editing it. No, let's copy a little bit at a time. So this is not going to line up the same way. We need this output. We'll probably have to do it on the other side or something. Although, in the case of this last one, that's not going to be necessary. But I'm more interested in the pattern that we're going to have to follow here. Yeah, there's only one tile where we can output these. Uh, it was jumping over two, three, two, three tiles at a time. I think that's it. Yeah, I think this is probably the pattern that we need to follow. This goes here, and so on. And get rid of this one. Boop a doop. Finished some research. Beautiful. Underground belts have very obvious places that they need to go here. And not sure where this is gonna go. But we'll tentatively just have that output like so. So this goes here. Oh, it could also go here. No, it couldn't. We're missing a underground pipe. Let's make sure we get all of those. Put that there until we decide where exactly everything's going to connect. And inserters. So just to confirm, there's only one tile in this whole thing where these could output. Okay. And then go 
Press there. Press there. Since the throughput is so low in general, uh, we could just put this through here instead of uh, worrying about merging things. And I think that's it. Now we just have to worry about connecting all the fluids. Lubricant is the only input, and that just has to come from up here. I think we'll definitely be connecting this one that way. Very easy. Uh, total throughput for lubricant is only 108 per second. So we really don't need to worry about the shapes of the pipes. Uh, as long as they all connect. That'll be fine. So that's this column of inputs. And I think it'll be simplest if we just connect uh, this column of inputs up here as well. So we don't have to bring these pipes across here somewhere. We need this one. Uh, and that just leaves the output pipes. Okay. Whoops. So, we're going to have the usual except these pumps will be the other way around. Uh, we need a station here as well. It's going to have to be a priority pickup because we need to get rid of waste products. Yeah, that's right. I thought the pumps were backwards for some reason. Um, but yeah, if we double this in the entire block, um, output pipes are all just... Uh, output belts are all just going to merge here, but pipes are going to go here and here. Uh, so this is pretty convenient, actually. Uh, that logistic train stop input is not so conveniently placed. Let's look at other options for where this is going to connect. Uh, rail is kind of in the way if we want to make this contaminated bio sludge. I'm thinking here is probably about as good as it gets. So if we're going to do that, oh, well, we're going to have to use an underground belt if we do that. Uh, that's no big deal, really. Or we could, since we're going to have to have a little bit of a spaghetti pipe anyway, we could put this right in the middle and not have to change any of these belts. And so this one has to be contaminated bio sludge. We'll just name the station as well. Bio sludge of the contaminated variety and biomechanical data. Biomechanical data. Um, 
don't forget to connect the wiring. So LTN knows what's in this station. Same goes for this one. So that just leaves getting contaminated cosmic water to connect down here somewhere. Also, I think for the lubricant over here, trim these things. Research is flying along nicely. there. That one's already correct. I think we'll make this bit a little bit more symmetrical. We can put a 3B here. That definitely looks better. That looks a little strange. Although it's technically better because fewer pipes. Alright, so that's all the bits on the end done here. Uh, we also have a contaminated cosmic water output here that we need to reunite with its friends. And we also haven't connected the pipes on the side to all of the other ones just yet. Should be fairly straightforward though. This is just lubricant. Actually, I think it would maybe be a little better if we put this here, uh, we'll do something different with the underground belt there, I think. And this can go through here. Alright, so contaminated cosmic water, this column is done, uh, this needs to connect down here as well, that might be a little bit of a problem, no, it should be fine actually. And then this one, this one might be trickier. Unless we connect the contaminated bio sludge somewhere a little bit different. In which case, this should actually be fairly easy. Uh, I will get rid of some of those pipes. It looks nice and symmetrical at least. Maybe I'll move this, or get rid of this uh, solar panel. Um, since if I do that... We can just connect the contaminated bio sludge like so. Actually, we could have put that here. That's totally fine as well. Okay. These two aren't overlapping or anything. I kind of want to squeeze in another... Some more solar panels if I can. We need one more tile here. 
Oops. And that should leave all of these things buffed. Fantastic. Okay. So we've got contaminated cosmic water connected here, 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 and once we do a little bit of spaghetti here somewhere, we need this belt to go somewhere as well. And I also uh, want to be able to copy just about all of this to fit right next to this. Although it looks like... It looks like that underground pipe there is going to be in the way. I could use one more tile over to the right here. It would hurt the symmetry a little bit. Also, what's that sticking out? Oh, it's fine. Yeah, I could just move all of that over one tile. Might be a better solution. There's a signal in the way up there. We can fix that easily. But I want to see how elegantly we can fit this together. Uh, the only thing we have to change is... We could just connect contaminated cosmic water here. I think that'll be fine. And this one... Uh, just like on the other side. Uh, this can go over here. Don't know why that's missing. Wait, what? This one doesn't have an output either. We've got a similar error over here somewhere. I think this is... I think this is that one. And we can just have that connect like so. So, total output, if we have this entire block filled, for contaminated cosmic water, is only 217 per second, so it should be totally fine uh, to simply connect those up here somewhere. What did I just delete? Or rather, where is the original of what I just deleted? Also, what is this? Oh, I see. It's fine, we can remove that. Okay. So, let's say tentatively... We're going to have our merging belt uh, right about here. We could we could limit each side to half a belt. I think that should probably be fine. And 
and then over here as well. Oh, this part's backwards. I need all of this to face north. And south. Cool. And then... We can't really do a proper merge. Unless maybe we change the shape of the belts. Uh, this one is going up here. Obvious place to connect these is obvious. I guess we could also connect them there. Uh, we can actually move this up a tile, I guess. Which means... We could have... This belt connects like so. It's all coming together. After all of those proper splitters to merge in here, I feel like I almost have to. Uh, just put this like so. Now that doesn't look quite right. Uh, what if we bring this back down here? That goes there, that goes there. And there we go. So that's all the belts done. Uh, we need this connected to contaminated cosmic water. And we're going to connect all the pipes, so we're just going to connect this in the most convenient place possible. Which I think is just going to be here. Just a little S-bend. Okay. Uh, that's supposed to reach down here, but I think we can maybe find some other way. So this column, this column, this column of contaminated cosmic water is connected. And these three as well should be, as soon as I... Figure something out with this corner, which is probably going to be exactly the same as before. That's a little different, actually. Uh, we can definitely put this here. Well, that's not really the problem, is it? We should just connect this around like so. Goes there. That's definitely a little bit cleaner, I think. Maybe if I'm being consistent. No, I can't do it on this side. It'll connect with this pipe here. 
Okay. So. This column. This column. This column. Everything but the middle columns. Uh, for contaminated cosmic water. Are connected. Underground belt is one pipe short. I think. Since we've got. Contaminated bio sludge connected up here. We really don't need these two. And. Uh, I could maybe put this output here. Bring this down here. That doesn't quite help us. Just want these pipes connected. We can't reach across this gap with the... Oh, we kind of can. With the underground belts. If we just make the pipe snake up this way. That should be all it takes. Alright, so barring any little mistakes, um, and also we need to do an input station on this side, but I think that is basically done. First of all, we need this to line up. I don't think the rate of lubricant we're going to need necessarily warrants a couple of drop-off stations, but on the other hand, symmetry. And also easily getting the lubricant uh, to where it needs to go. So this one is going to connect directly. And this one down here, a Sigma Bean. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And I think that is it. We don't actually have a big unified uh, lubricant pipe network, so let's just connect that. And I think, uh, apart from this part, which is not going to be a perfect copy-paste mirror, we're going to have to remove it couple of things. Get rid of the pipe. Uh, this might line up. Oh, except I forgot the... Uh, the belts are all going to be backward with this part. Let's just try aligning this part up, see how that goes. It's almost good enough. This part needs to be moved over a tile. Which means this has to go back here. Which means this has to go back here. Which means this has to go back here. That still reaches, but that part wasn't going to fit down this way unless we move the pipe. I think we will start with this. This part goes here. And... If we have this bit of belt go here... 
then how are we going to connect this bit of lubricant? That's actually surprisingly difficult. Um, there isn't somewhere I can squeeze an underground pipe through here. I might even have to... I hope I don't have to remove a solar panel. That, is, that one tile is very troublesome. Oh, wait. We can... Move this over here. I don't... I don't think that's going to make a difference, actually. Want to sell Hangover? Hey, I am Sun. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Apart from that, I guess. Uh, we could... Oh, this is easier than I thought it was. Um... No, we do have to move this part, so we get a bit of a squiggly belt here. Let's grab a 3B. This goes here. And this goes here. I think that's already max length, yep. Okay, I think that's our build. And what a build it is. Uh, so this is going to just be contaminated cosmic water. Thank you for the follow guy clicking. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We don't need to provide stack threshold when it's only fluids. Everything else is normal. Switched on. This should already be switched on. Uh, biomechanical data and contaminated cosmic, uh, contaminated bio sludge. Not contaminated cosmic bio sludge. Wait, what? Conta. Oh, I'm looking at recipes. Okay, that should just about do it. Uh, so let's summon some trains and find out if we made any mistakes. Or rather, find out which mistakes we made, besides forgetting to connect this wire. This will be way more than we need for quite a while. Um, I don't feel like removing three quarters of it, though. To be clear, I would only be removing the machines and inserters and beacons. Alright, we have a train delivering something. Blank data cards. Fantastic. That's going somewhere else, actually. Did I name the station? Uh... I forgot to update the fluid on the station name. The rest is actually the same. Lubricant. Oh! Uh, uh, that was what I feared. There's a train on the way here. And I just messed it up. Um, I need to find it. 
It's this one. Okay, let's just... Let's copy the name back here for now, until the trains are done. One of them has no path. Probably just because there's a bit of rail missing. Okay. Should make sure we build whatever we can over here as well. And trains are in motion. This one's bringing lubricant. There's also a train waiting. Uh, another lubricant train. Probably going to the two different stations. And we're going to need a couple more trains to come before we can spot it if we made any mistakes, other than forgetting. Um, Other than forgetting to connect a lubricant pipe somewhere. But from what I'm seeing... Oh, hello. Yeah, there is lubricant here. It's... This one doesn't have the right connector. Okay. Let's go fix that. And there's probably an identical mistake over here. The rest is looking good. Fantastic. Uh, let's turn this off for a second so we can update the station name. And once this train arrives, we'll fix this station name as well. That block of scaffolding is already finished. Beautiful. I'm glad I went to the trouble of making the scaffolding spiders. Biomass takes no time at all to drop off because its stack size is 5. I guess it takes exactly as long to drop off from a train as uh, material testing packs. Anything with a stack size of 12 or lower, now that we've got the maximum stack size, uh, is going to take exactly the same amount of time. But yeah, that's... wow. We've we've actually got no biomass left in the chests when all we've done is fill these belts and put them in the machines uh, and we don't have any other resources so we've still produced zero products here. Talem Grandmaster, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So bots and belts... Um, have the small stack sizes of these things bots and belts it makes no difference whatsoever but it actually greatly reduces the throughputs of trains when the stack sizes are so small but on the other hand it takes such a short time to load them and unload them that that sort of offsets it a little bit at the same time do we have blank data cards for once? 5.2k. 
4.1k. Not enough for a train. And we're back to lacking rough data storage substrates. Is it because of input or is the scrap output too full? It's actually because of input now, main plate. Um, don't know what to say about that. Uh, we've added a lot, and I do mean a lot of furnaces. Um, I mean this is this is twenty. Uh, twenty times thirty-six, and we've also got six over here. We've got 936 industrial furnaces doing iron, copper, steel, stone brick, and glass. Although, when you set up new furnaces, the glass is a little bit slow because it's relying on stored sand. We don't have any shortage of iron ore. I'm almost tempted to... Well, I should probably redesign the uh, Omni smelters, to be honest. Either I redesigned them with wide area beacons and probably bots maybe as well, because as much as it'll be a bot massacre, uh, because of bot attrition. Is this item on ground? Yep. I should name it. Item on ground. Um. What was I trying to say? I can either copy paste our existing Omni Smelter design another many times. Which, because of all the belts and stuff, it's probably going to be a little bit more taxing on UPS than if I redesign it, especially with wide area beacons. Um, I don't suppose we've got... It would be very, very convenient if we've got room to put wide area beacons in here. We don't. Uh, but yeah, with bot spam, we can increase the density of this build massively. Uh, it's also more UPS friendly. Has been quite a while since I did another iteration on the Omni Smelter design. Another trouble with belts, apart from the fact that this is the best we could do with uh, six possible recipes. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. Five recipes, actually. Yeah, it's five recipes, and uh, Vulcanite blocks are common to many of the better versions of those recipes. But yeah, uh... This is the best we could do belt-wise for all of those inputs. And it's actually not enough throughput for sand. Uh, the only way we smelt glass at a decent pace is if we accumulate a bunch of sand before we get started. But with... Uh, with a bot design, there's really no limit to how many different recipes we can use, and it's going to be able to be much, much denser um, compared to compared to this thing. All of this room that's dedicated to belts, both input and especially output, um, can be used for more smelters. And We can have more smelters, fewer blocks, we can put 
all of the... Uh, let me just check. Industrial furnace. Can I... I don't think I can put these up here, can I? No. I just want to place a furnace and check the recipes. I'm thinking this would also allow us to bring all of the ingot smelting into the Omni smelters as well. Hey, Viciously. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It's also an opportunity to, um, to try something that I've wanted to try for quite a while. Uh, with the, with the Omni Smelter designs, uh, this time I would like to try having them all communicate and have some kind of sort of central planning whereby obviously local storage has to be taken into account uh, for what we're going to smelt, but have a system whereby we can prioritize based on what's in the rail network as a whole. Which one of these is the leader? I believe it's... Not this one, actually. It's the brighter one. Yeah, there we go. Let's get the deconstruction spiders to hopefully pick up all of that detritus in one go. We are demanding a lot right now with everything we're making. But I am surprised that we've already gotten to the point again where we're bottlenecking on iron plate. Um, of all things, that is unfortunate. Um, I'll just check the smelters. I think iron ore itself Hmm. I was going to say, I think iron ore itself is something that we've been keeping up with. But at a glance at the first few Omni smelters, none of them have actually run out of iron ore yet. But the fact that they are, that some of them are getting close, uh, suggests that we, oh, this one is out of iron ore. Okay, so we actually can benefit from just doing a few more iron mines. That's kind of good, in a way. Um, let's get the construction spiders. Uh, yeah, I am sort of glad I don't need to build new smelters just yet. I do feel like sitting down to a big new complicated design like that again soon but right now I kind of just want to push unlocking more things with space exploration there is that um, it's, it's an asteroid belt uh, there's maelstrom and there's Dolentia that give us iron core fragments. Something else that might give us more iron ore as well is if I update the excess item. It's a little bit ironic there's iron in there now. Uh, if I reconfigure or redesign the excess uh, resource smasher so that it gets rid of extra cryonite, holmium, etc. I don't think we're full on any of those at the moment. Uh, except for uranium, which feels very weird, but also cool. Vita melange. 
We're very, very full on Vitamelange. So if we configure it to do, to also destroy Vitamelange, um, that means we do more uh, Vitamelange or Fragment Processing. Uh, which means we get more of those vanilla core fragments. Which means we get more iron, we get more copper, etc. Uh, lots of things on the to-do list right now in order to expand certain, uh, certain throughputs. Are uh, Omni smelters necessary? Maybe high throughput single purpose blocks would work with few Omnis to handle the overflow? Uh, Omni smelters basically let us have the same throughput of... Uh, it gives us the same smelting capacity with fewer smelters because they're not going to be idle sometimes. Well, they're only going to be idle if we are literally backed up on every resource. So it also removes the guessing game of exactly how many smelters we need for each resource. Uh, so what was I about to do? Oh, that's right. Iron ore. I mean, iron plate. I'm going to bump up the priority for... Um, uh, rough data storage substrates. Because everything in space depends on these. So I don't want to be waiting for them. That didn't take very long at all to get at least some iron plate delivered here. Meanwhile, um, just to test this thing, I think I will go and pick up some blank data cards from somewhere. Uh, possibly here? Question mark? It's going to be easier if I steal the blank data cards from where they're produced in the first place. Let's bring you down here. Add another rail block. That's the wrong type. Uh, remove the big power poles. Just the scaffolding, please. Is this your first playthrough of Space Exploration? Yes. Nickleb, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, let's grab some blanks. I can actually fit almost all of these in my inventory. For the follow Nick Club. Just gonna run down here and shove those blank data cards where they need to go manually so we can confirm that this is working. Oh, is that what I think it is? Nope, that's uh, biomass. Oh, that's weird. I actually forgot that we made biomass available from the main bus build over here as well for the rail network. That helps, I suppose. Although, shouldn't... Shouldn't the train be prioritizing the station that has zero biomass here? I would have thought that kind of thing was implicit in space exploration. Uh, sorry, in LTN. The first builds of LTN train stops that I made actually included some circuitry to dynamically set priorities based on how much 
we had, but I thought that was actually unnecessary, but apparently not. Alright, and this is going to go here. What? No, 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 no. Gotta rebalance this. There we go. Now then, it seems like all of the machines on this side are about to be working. Fantastic. That means all of the inputs are good. And now we just need to wait and see if any of these stop because they can't output fluid or something like that. Oh. We've still got this part. Which doesn't actually go anywhere. Uh, let's fix that. And this one as well. We have any similar mistakes? No, I think that's the end of those, at least. Contaminated cosmic water and contaminated bio sludge is reaching its destination. 9.1k, 9.2k. 9.5. How quickly does this output the fluid? 20 and 10. It might take a little while if any of these pipes are not connected properly to... Oh. No, we've just run out of biomass. So, as far as we know, all of these are working. Cool. Uh, this needs to be specific... I think biomechanical data, biomechanical data, that's because we've got um, a signal coming into this wire from a contaminated cosmic, contaminated bio sludge as well. I guess I could have just set these to be, yeah, now that I think about it, we could keep that as being each. And this could be set to biomechanical data is less than or equal to um, zero, which is the average. But I kind of like having this combinator telling us exactly what this is as well. So we're at 1.1k already. Fantastic. And that is... Two, three of the four, um, uh, three of the four data cards that we need for biological catalog. So all we're missing is biochemical data, which uses, um, biochemical facilities the giant space chemical plants. Not entirely sure what the layout is going to look like for this one. Uh, biomass, vitamelange, and blank data card. So just enough items coming in that we should probably use two belts, which is a little bit of a nuisance. Uh, we also need chemical gel. The ratio was 1 to 1 to 1, was, was it not? It is 1 to 1 to 1. I think we'll use... Two, uh, we'll use a full belt for the biomass, just so that there's more storage in the train stops.
And where's my block? There we go. So we're going to do the usual uh, two pair of outputs here. Bio mass and blank data card. Wait, was that? Yeah, blank data card. And what was the last thing we need here? Uh, Vitam aligned space. Actually, if we keep those separate, it looks a bit easier to read, I think. Although this is going to be next to this, isn't it? I think that's slightly easier to read. Alright, so we're going to do it like so. We're going to connect all of these. The belts are going to read belt contents hold. The inserters are going to read hand contents hold. And whatever resource they're outputting has to be equal to zero. So we've got one belt for biomass, one belt for blank data cards plus space. Uh, we'll see, let's get a feel for how much throughput we're going to need to be able to support here. Uh, it was kind of difficult to have one of these beacons fit eight machines. Realistically, we could probably do this like four times or less. Let's just do this for starters. Biochemical data. Uh, and that's the minus 70% power consumption. Uh, 10.8 per second. If we doubled this, we could still do it all with just one belt. Uh, and even if that wasn't the case, we could shape this so that we get two belts of output for each thing, I think. Alright. So this is looking pretty good so far. Um, I'll grab the design that I keep forgetting to blueprint from somewhere. Very compact uh, layout that puts all of these together. There it is. So all this is doing is the stuff on the right goes here, goes here, goes here, goes here, and the stuff on the left, vice versa. Uh, we're also going to need a chemical gel. Drop off here. And don't forget to connect all these chests. So that LTN knows what's in them. Okay. Uh, looks like we're doing the inputs. 
Oh, that's right. This one only outputs fluid, doesn't it? So I don't think that's necessarily going to be appropriate. Uh, but I think... We could just... Do the outputs like this. One fluid input, two fluid outputs. Uh, as opposed to... Three in, one out. Hmm. Can we maybe spin these around? I don't think that's going to be the similar or the same on both sides, no matter what we do. Okay, so we'll put our physical inputs like this, physical outputs like that. Uh, I don't think we need to worry too much about the rate of physical output. There's no physical output junk. That makes it a little bit easier. If the beacon wasn't so wide, we could make this one tile more narrow, but I don't think we need to worry too much about that. I'm curious as to whether this will prevent items from ending up on this part of the belt. Yeah, that seems fine. Auto save. Cool. Alright then. I need that to go through there. Okay, so input pipe is going to be pretty straightforward. We're just going to bring this down the middle and connect it wherever we wish. Um, input belts. Oh, I forgot, we need two input belts for this. Hmm... Okay, what if this becomes input? Don't need the splitters. And I might have put these a bit close together up here, but let's see. Just need a splitter. And that goes there. I don't think it matters. It definitely doesn't matter which is closer. And this one. Are we going to run out of room or... What? I think we are... Let's get rid of the pipe for the moment. If that goes there... And that goes there... Oh, this is much simpler than I realized. Yeah, that's actually going to be really straightforward. The only trouble is... We need this underground pipe here, so we'll put this splitter here, actually. Should be more than sufficient. Let's put in some undergrounds just to tidy this up a little bit. Maybe 
here. I don't know. And input fluids are already connected. How how much input fluid is this? Only 108 per second. Uh, per second, yes. So we can easily keep up with that. Could we perhaps... Uh, we need to deal with the fluid outputs as well. Let's do that first before we get ahead of ourselves. We can put this one here. And this one here. Seems pretty easy so far. And on the other side, we can probably do the exact same thing. Except there'll be opposite fluids. So on both sides, it's the one on the left that's contaminated cosmic water. Um, I don't think we'll be doubling this. We could maybe do a couple more, I suppose. Beacon would have to be moved. So it's only touching the two at the bottom. Uh, this doesn't have to go across here until the end. That should still be low enough throughput for the pipes that it doesn't matter. Oh, it's already connected up the top anyway. Um, so it double doesn't matter that... Um, the shape of the pipes... As long as the fluid gets everywhere, it's fine. This is one tile too high, I think. Fantastic. Okay, so what's our rate with all of this? Uh, 16.3 per second is quite a lot. especially for consumption of blank data cards, and we can easily double it when we feel the need. Our outputs are one solid and two fluids, just like last time. So I'll start by copying this. Get rid of all of that for now. Add in some... Oh, we need some physical outputs as well. Just to double check, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, 1.3 per second out is pretty trivial. Um, so I think we'll put that here. Long arm inserter will be fine. goes here. Uh, we need to make sure we connect these pipes across. It might be convenient to connect this up here, actually. Just confirm that's contaminated biosludge. Oh, wait. Yeah, the one on the left to the one on the left is what we're trying to do. 
So that would be contaminated by a sludge. These underground belts are already max distance. Uh, we do have room to change that a bit. So if we really want to connect both of these up at the top, uh, I think this is fine. So if that's contaminated bio sludge, connected, this is going to be contaminated cosmic water. And we need a couple of threes over here. That lines up almost perfectly. Unfortunate. What about here? That's sort of one off, but I think I could live with it. Pipes on bottom connect wrongly to the machines. Uh, do you mean the nine length pipes? That still doesn't reach. That's unfortunate. Maybe it would be just as elegant a fit to do it like this. Or even just have a few regular pipes here. Yeah, two different inputs. The, uh, the 15 and the 9s don't actually have a connection on the side, even though they look a lot like it. Um, and you can see it in the description as well does not connect on the sides. Yeah, I can see where you would think they do. It's It does look very similar at a glance. Um, that's one of the reasons why I was using a Niner here. 15 I would like to use, but it's just a little bit too long. Okay. So that goes there. This goes here. Uh, we don't need a splitter to merge that because it's already all of these items on the right side, all of these items on the left side of the belt. And I think we'll add some undergrounds just to tidy things up a little bit here. That's actually a perfect fit. Very nice. It also reduces the amount of stuff that we have to carry uh, to build this in one go. Oh. Uh, and then, if this goes down here, it's going to connect to this thing. Which is just a little unfortunate, but I'm sure we'll manage. Okay. And copying this to this side is so trivial, I'm not even going to bother with it for now. Um, if we ever need to double this, we'll do just that. Alright, let's add our little icons. Uh, this is biomechanical data. And this one, last but not least, biochemical data. Cool. Oh. Um, we haven't set the requests yet. Which fluid is this? Chemical gel. Okay. I'll copy this name for the moment. It's going to be pretty similar. 
We just have to add Vita Melange Spice. And then change Lubricant to Chemical Gel. As for the Requester, turn that off. Uh, what does Spice stat to? 50. So just a little bit more than one train load. Uh, biomass, 2000. Uh, 5 times 40 times 4. 800 is one train load. So this is two and a half train loads. We're going to have to bump that down. We don't have that kind of storage here. Uh, make it like... Technically, if I set it to two train loads, it should never overfill, but I don't trust it. So let's ask for like 1,200. That's one and a half train loads. And blank data card. 9k. Chemical gel. Turn that on. Also, did we get this thing delivered to... Oh, that's right. I manually gave it some blank data cards. So we can get rid of the high priority on this for now. We, we know it works. Uh, yeah, so that is... Biochemical uh, data. So we should have everything, there should be at least something that a train can deliver here already. I wonder what's taking it so long. Oh, literally the second I said that. Alright, chemical gel is on its way. And next we need to do... Well, I feel like copying uh, this part. It's going to be energy catalog and broad energy catalog um, that we need to bring together for broad biological insight. So all of this is going to be shaped the same as our previous builds. I do want to perhaps redesign this part just a little bit so that we can fit it under beacons, even if we don't use those beacons for the moment. Um, but for starters, I think we will... Uh, just copy that block. And we'll edit it a bit. Okay. Rail block goes here. Um, just in case, I'll send my construction spiders back for resupply. While we're waiting for that, let's check on our military spiders. Oh, they're stuck. <laughs> well, as long as they're safe. How much ammo do they have? They still have quite a lot of ammo, actually. I think we'll send them back into uh, the biter nests. Otherwise, it's going to be a very long trip for just a small resupply. 
relatively small. They should be able to handle all of that pretty easily. We'll send them at a few tiny bases so that their shields are definitely recharged before they hit this one. And the amount of the map covered by biters shrinks just a little bit more. Alright, back to base with you after that. And it looks like we're resupplied. How much scaffolding are you guys carrying? Actually, how empty are your batteries? That's cool. Yeah, I do like how they're doing now. Let's put another block here while we can. And let's uh, send them to the middle of it. That's a cool pattern that the bots are making. Fantastic. Really glad I took the time to make dedicated scaffolding spiders. Really makes things easier. Uh, we're still... Okay, we are making some blank data cards. That's not too bad. Now, uh, we said we're going to copy this build. At least to start with. Get rid of the combinators for requesting things. And then I think we're just... Uh, we're just gonna... Remove a couple of these. Move them apart. Well... I mean... I'm pretty sure we can just fit a wide area beacon on the side for the build on the left. But we need to move these ones out to each side a little bit. Okay, so this is going to be biological catalog. Once the spiders have finished placing rail. Computer has to have a little think every time a rail, uh, a, a signal rather, is placed. So these intersections uh, cause us to have to wait for a moment. this over here and this one is broad biological catalog and I just want to check the rate again so I think these are equal yeah they are um, we can put a wide beacon we can actually touch all but one row with this, which is a little unfortunate. But I think... Can we move this down four tiles? Yeah, I don't think we need to even change anything here, really. Oh, this is a row of nine anyway. So... We'll make it a more even number. Mm. 
move this down one, two, three, four tiles. Uh, we might need some more undergrounds to facilitate that. Wait a sec, we can only actually reach three of these in each direction if we do it like that. Okay, what if we do keep those together? And the beacon can now fit eight in each direction. So we'll do the same thing here. Pipe's going to change a little bit. Belts are going to change a little bit. Uh, I think we'll leave that where it is. Actually, we can only move this two tiles over, so we're going to have to move both of them over a bit. One, two. And... One, two. Uh, I need to copy the usual negative 70% power consumption thing. And this goes here. And that's going to change a little bit. It's actually a neater fit than it used to be, except for this thing sticking out. Uh, although these need to come over here. So I take back everything. I feel like this is going to look a little bit neater, actually. And then we can... Move these over. Yeah, I like that better. Uh, this needs to go over here, which means this needs to go here. Spiders are not in range right now. Should be enough. Okay. This goes here. Uh, almost forgot why those underground belts were there. So what fluid is this? The output fluid. Um, that's going to need to connect somewhere. Fifteen, perhaps. That's okay. Is it already connected to... No. We've messed it up. Nine, ten, eleven. There's no... particularly good way to do this part. Oh, that's already max length. I thought it was a bit... Wait, what? Oh, I see. Ghost was blocking it. I think that's okay. Uh, this needs to move over. A couple of tiles. That thing 
needs to go there. And then. That looks a bit cleaner. Uh, this actually needs to go one tail over again. Not that far though. Alright. Like this should go up here a bit more. I think that's everything. We need to set the requests, obviously. Biocombustion data. And biomechanical data. Biocombustion. And biomechanical. Copy that here. Here and here. Oh, it's supposed to be the other two, um, biochemical and genetic up here. Genetic. Biochemical. And genetic. And that goes here. Name of this station is these four, and uh, I need a combinator for it. I'm going to be a little bit lazy and use this to get our combinator. Uh, where did I... Oh, there we go. Next this like so. Request stack threshold 160. We're not doing any fluids, so we just need to set... Uh, 8,000. Make it 16,000. So we get a buffer of each of these. So that's just two train loads for each resource. And I think that's it. As for rod, we need bio combustion data. Experimental genetic, biochemical resistance, and biomechanical resistance. Whoops. Uh, so is it just these four in a row? Biocombustion, experimental genetic, biochemical resistance, biomechanical resistance. I believe that's correct. In any case... We'll be double checking it as we make all of our bioelectric cryogenesis. I'm pretty sure those are the two things not included here. Perfect. Uh, change the name of this one. One, two, three, and four. Looks like we've already got a delivery of genetic data. Fantastic. And was that uh, rough data storage substrates I see? It is indeed. Beautiful. Actually, I just want to check something. Uh, rough data storage substrate... Theoretically 199 consumed per second here. 
99. Oh, that's right. We had to upgrade this from being bottlenecked at 90. So it is actually like 200 rough data storage substrates per second. Uh, how many can we do here? Only 118 per second. So I need to make another one of these. And I didn't even realize. Uh, I forgot I sent our construction spiders on an errand to make a iron mine as well. Let's get rid of... I don't particularly want to temporary, temporarily get rid of most of our solar power. So let's put some more pylons here first. And once that's connected... And disconnect that part. Fantastic. Let's grab our modern mine. Figure out where we're going to put it. I think we'll just put it as far down here as we can. Is there a bit of water there? Yeah, there is. I think we'll still place it this way, and we'll figure out a way around it. We need this one to be slightly further down anyway. And we also need a mine here. Once again, instead of worrying about doing some giant mergers, oh, I should probably power switch this, which means we've put it in a really inconvenient spot for the moment, but we'll figure that out soon. Uh, rather than struggle to... oh, that's tragic. One off. But yeah, rather than struggle to figure out how we're going to merge all of this stuff and split it and everything, we're just going to have two belts go directly to a train station each time. And that also gives us lots of capacity for like six trains to come here at the same time, if need be. Uh, I need to turn on that free x-ray mod. And now we can actually see what we're doing here. That'll do. Just make something standardized so that we can copy paste it. That doesn't look right. Oh, I see. Fantastic. Um, we should probably also make these not copper or pickups. I think LTN will figure it out anyway. Um, we need some belt, uh, some rail rather, to come out this way. the lowest spot we can do this. 
Right about here, that's a little bit awkward. Could maybe make it come off of this one instead. and easy. Throw in some signals. And move this pylon. I think it's already at max length just have to do this. There should already be pylons up oh, there they are. Connecting those. Anything missing? Just wide area beacons for some reason. I think we only had a couple of wide area beacons. I had to do something to make sure they were automated. I maybe hadn't automated them yet earlier. Here we go. Wide area beacons, 20. And we're not trying to craft them right, at, right now, which tells me that we already have them. Right. Wide area beacon, we have 70. How is it we have 70? Not that I'm complaining. Uh, let's get all of this rail placed. And we're going to need a couple of chain signals here. What's going on with this, uh, train? It's trying to go somewhere. The signals seem okay. It doesn't have no part. Oh. Well, there's your problem. Just need a couple of signals here to break up this, uh, sector. There it goes. I have no idea how this one got a bunch of iron in it. Just have to send it back to uh, the depot to get that sorted out. There's another couple of giant iron mines over here as well. Well, fairly big anyway. Three of them, actually. Hey, Mucky. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How's it going? Are you you're streaming today, I'm guessing? Sushi Cat Yum. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, alright, so we've got our beacons here and everything. Oh, we're missing... Missing some inputs. Uh, I actually need to move this... Again. That's unfortunate. Alright, let's get started. Two tiles over. Beacon has to move one tile to the right. And... How is it? Oh, I see. Because normally they're taking from each other. Okay. Let me just double check the rate on this. Uh, it's still only 4.1 per second for each resource, so I don't think we have to worry about 
belt throughput at all. But these two in the middle are going to need a bit of an update. I uh, don't normally, but I am tonight. Okay. Um, so what are we doing here? This is obviously going here. And we need... One of these... Over here. This one. Uh, which belt is this supposed to be? This one here. That should do it. And then we have to redo this part again. It's gonna line up there. And this is going to be out of whack as well. Close enough. If this goes here... I think we'll just do it like that. Unless there's somewhere that lines up better now. Kind of does. I don't really feel like going to the trouble of changing. Uh, I think this part would look a lot cleaner if it was going to the side. So I'll bring that over here. This goes there. could even put a pump in if we wanted to, but it's really not particularly particularly necessary. Uh, also, this thing isn't lined up as it should be anymore. Probably you should have noticed that sooner. I've also got cold thermofluid in here already. Um, I might just pump it all over here before I mess with the pipes. And I feel like I'm forgetting something. Something we were doing on Nervous. That's right, we need wide area beacons. Um, I should probably redo this build uh, with the wide area beacons, but... I really just want to get the throughput of the rough data storage substrates for now. Actually, we had to bump up the priority on the requesters for this. Um, so I think we'll procrastinate making another block for rough data storage substrates for now. We'll let those machines continue to be a bottleneck um, for the moment because we're going to bottleneck on iron ore for the whole base anyway for a little while and that's going to exacerbate it. Alright, so you should have wide area beacons. You do not have wide area beacons. Still got room for them. Um, 25 is a lot. I think it's fine if it's just the just a, just the leader carrying the uh, wide area beacons, I suppose. Where did I put that? 
it was 25 exactly. And we'll get them to finish the scrap processing build first. Otherwise the uh, rough data storage is going to bottleneck on that anyway. Do we already have this thing functional? Uh, I forgot to change the names on these stations. Iron ore provider. I think everything else will already be set up. Yeah, this is generic. This is generic. Technically didn't have to do anything there. Uh, we do need to add beacons to this build, and we want to power switch the whole thing. So we'll have the, uh, we'll have the main power line connect somewhere else. It's just a regular pylon. Way over here. Oh, that's going to touch that one. And this one's also too close. That'll be fine. And then we'll put some power switch behavior on these. I was actually thinking we don't need to make a latch circuit uh, with power switches. Just like we do with the... Uh, big miners, we can just block the belt when accumulator charge isn't full. And the time that it takes for iron ore to move along the belt is going to sort of act like a bit of a latch. There's actually accumulators here already. I don't even need to... Well... I wonder if wire is going to reach up here. It's definitely not. Let's go. Accumulator charge greater than 29%. Oh, I forgot. The main reason where. The main reason we want to power switch these is because the beacons themselves consume 10 megawatts just by sitting there. Um, so it won't do to just block the miners in this case. The reason that blocking the miners works well for power management is because the miners have a minimum consumption of zero. Beacons are the very opposite of that. Alright, is this all connected? Yes, good. Fantastic. Uh, we need... That's right, I was pumping this away so we we can uh, mess with this build. I'll put this down here. And I kind of want to put this here as well, so maybe we'll move this pipe yet again. This is too far. Of course it would be eight tiles. Okay. And as for the 25 degree thermofluid, it is connected up there. down this way. This is 
a spot for a 15 actually. Good enough. Okay. That should be our bioscience build. Or at least bioscience one, except we haven't done the equivalent to this part yet either. I think we added beacons. Or at least No, we didn't add a beacon to this yet, we just noticed that there's a good spot for it. That's fine. We'll copy this block. And change the recipes. Send the scaffolding spiders back home for now. Number one thing when we do this is make sure the Constant combinators are switched off or deleted. So that we don't get trains bringing us the wrong stuff. Alright, broad biological catalogue. That's not what we're doing. Broad biological insight. And... Biological simulation. Bioscience 1, Bioscience 2, everything else is the same except for we need bioscrubbers here. I don't even know what bioscrubbers are, but we can uh, we can set up the train station them ahead of time. Bioscrubber provider and I caught it in time. Uh, we almost got a delivery of iridium plate here that we were not looking for. Let's turn this off until we're ready. And what goes here? Vita Melange Extract. And everything else should line up to be exactly the same. Okay, Extract stacks to 50. We'll request a little bit more than one train load. Uh, station name. Extract. Requester. Don't forget to change the filters, otherwise we're going to get a very confused train. And over here, the scrubs. And I'll just confirm we don't need much throughput for those two things. 1.3 and 6.6. Alright, cool. Now we just need to set up the catalog requesters. Biological catalog. I think the fluids will be exactly the same. Negative 100 goes here. Negative 100. Negative 100. Cool. So it's literally just this part. And on this side, it's going to be broad bio. And the fluid's going to stay the same. Broad biological catalog. I think that's it. Let's switch this back on. Oh, wait, station names. Cat. 
to love. Fantastic. So that is... Excuse me. Uh, Vita Melange Extract is on the way. Fantastic. We obviously don't have scrubbers or broad biological catalogs or any of the things directly needed to... Uh, make broad biological catalogs just yet. But we'll get there. Biocombustion, experimental. Biocombustion, experimental. Biocombustion, experimental. Copy these across, and these two are going to be biochemical resistance and biomechanical resistance. Bio... Yeah, it's not electric and cryogenics. Biochemical resistance. Biomechanical resistance. And then copy these. Fantastic. Um, we already set up the station. We just forgot to set, change those filters and signals. And I actually thought... Oh, we did. I was going to say I thought we would have uh, at least one type of thing here delivered already. We've already got genetic data completely saturated. Which is a good start. Hold thermofluid. Uh... Oh, it's here. That's right, I forgot that I put this pump here. Um, while we were working on the pipes. How long is this? 3 plus 9 is 12. We could do 997. And we need to connect this up here as well. Fantastic. Do these have input? They do not, because there's a pipe missing here. Hey, Gek. It's been a while. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Where are our spooders? How have you been? Buried in study or something? Been a while? Yes, indeed. Wait, does that thing here mean that all of those builds have a little bit of belt sticking out? This one seems fine. No, it's because I... yeah, it's because I changed this one uh, for the beacons. What is this mod pack? It is called Space Exploration. Uh, almost everything, most of the things uh, that you see modded here are Space Exploration, plus a few quality of life mods. Uh, and then we've also got, wait, Bottleneck Light? I don't think I'm using that. That's a lie. Uh, I've also got uh, crafting combinators, which allow me to set the recipe for some machines by sending a signal. Don't have a job yet, and life is meh, although physical and mental health are getting together. Well, that part's good at least. Um... 
We've also got that substation here. Wait, if that's here... No, I think we fixed that problem in the build that I just copied that from. Yeah, yeah, I remember the belt was missing and we ended up forgetting to connect some pipes as well. Um, so we just need to put this here, this here, this here. And all of that should be good again. All the output fluids are connected. Nice. Alright, uh, let's get, well, let's add some symbols here to tell us what this block is doing. Biological catalog, broad biological catalog, um, bioscience one, Wait, I think we just... Yeah, we're just labeling these with Bioscience 2. And it's sort of implicit uh, that they do Bioscience 1 here. Uh, we need to change some of these as well. Bioscience Pack 1. Bioscience Pack 2. Uh, this doesn't change at all. This doesn't change at all. We're just going to change the name of the station. Bioscience 2. And Bioscience 1. Provider. I just noticed the name of the uh, Material 1 is probably backwards there. I wonder... I doubt if this one's backward as well. Oh, it is. That's weird. Energy Science 1. Provider. Uh, we finished all of our research that we can do with what we've recently unlocked, except for very, very long artillery research. Visiting off to the UK for two months to try and see if I like it there. Okay, good luck with it. I hope it works out. Um, yeah, I think we're good. We just need to... We now need to do the four... Uh, biosciences. Oh, we got... Something's wrong here. Biochemical data, we are actually producing it, but the uh, balanced loader is confused. Probably because we left this set to biomechanical data. I might just take this opportunity to run a little experiment. Um, what I was talking about before was we can probably keep this thing as each. And if there are interfering signals, uh, we should make this check for biochemical data specifically, instead of setting it to everything. And that should do the balance loading just fine. Seems good. So we've got like 20 in each chest right now. Uh, fluid output. Oh, I, wait. Is this in the right spot? It looks like it. Fluid output. With these. I thought I connected them. Okay. We missed a single pair of uh, underground pipes here. I think that's the only reason half of this build isn't working.
Products finished, 36, 37, 43, 45, 39, 38, yeah, so it's only output fluid that's the problem. Spiders arrive, oh, pipes are placed, and machines start working. Fantastic. We'll have those 8,000 uh, biochemicals in no time. Alright, let's grab our scaffolding spiders again. And I'm just trying to decide... Oh, yeah, we did label that one, actually. I'm just trying to decide where to put... The rest of uh, the bioscience. One, two, three, four, maybe? Seems good. Let's start with the one right next to... Actually, no. This will be the destination, so let's start over here. Meanwhile, on Nervous, uh, let's see, military spiders are all resupplied, let's send them back. Zigzag for safety. Give him a little break after each fight, so their shields recharge. Oh, I need to upgrade um, all of my spiders on Nalvis with better... Uh, well, it's not even twice as good, but we do have the portable RTG Mark II now. Uh, 500 as opposed to 300 uh, kilowatts does go past a certain critical mass that makes it significantly more effective, though. Let's actually look at the consumption of these different power armor items. Exoskeleton, 30% bonus movement speed, 200 kilowatts. Literally, this is the difference. If we have a portable RTG upgraded to a portable RTG Mark II, uh, we could fit a free exoskeleton. That alone is something to consider. Currently we're doing two portable RTGs, which really tells us like power is the bottleneck for how good this can be. Uh, we've got a thousand kilowatt maximum drain from the shields. 600 kilowatt production. If we doubled the portable RTGs, the shields could go indefinitely. And then this battery would only be for the one laser turret, which is a bit silly. Um, we could maybe have one portable RTG, more batteries, and an exoskeleton. Uh, we could have one portable RTG. I, I, I like this amount of shielding. Did we get better shielding yet? No, Mark IV is still our best. Adaptive armor. We actually need science pack four for adaptive armor. Mark five. So that's not happening for a long time. Um, however, we do have energy shields, which I haven't tried yet in space exploration. They are much more hit points. The tier 1 has half of the hit points of the tier 4 adaptive armor. 
but presumably recharge rate 38.96. Let's call that 40. Recharge rate 10. They charge faster. Uh, what tier are we at? Let's compare Mark 1 to Mark 1. 25 hit points versus 100. And much faster recharge rate. Power draw is max consumption 1 megawatt. As opposed to 25 kilowatts. Energy per hit point 20 kilowatts. Energy per hit point... Oh, 20 kilojoules I meant to say. Uh, energy per hit point is only a, f a quarter more than that. I thought the energy shield would be a lot less power efficient for how much bigger it is. Uh, what about the tier 2 which we can get? Energy shield. Tier 3? We need energy science pack 3 for that. Let's look at what we can make already. 250 hit points versus 200. It's only a little bit more. 112 hit points per second. Uh, energy per hit point. 26.67 kilojoules. It's exactly the same as... Oh no, it's slightly more expensive hit point than the first one. Uh, but the adaptive armor is only a little bit more energy efficient. Um, this is a bit of a pain to make though. It's kind of a side grade. It's slightly better. I mean the recharge speed is much better. Yeah, the recharge. It's like 11 times faster recharge. Okay, I take it back. This is way better. Um, we need to send some force field data back to Nalvis. Which is going to be a bit of a nuisance. Do they take up the same space? I believe so, yes. 2x2, two 2x2. Two, two two. Yeah, I should probably upgrade the spiders with this. Um, especially if you're running batteries. There's really no reason not to have uh, energy shields at this point. Um, but yeah, so currently we have... Two RTGs, four adaptive armors. Uh, this could go a thousand kilowatt max consumption. Well, let's suppose we do energy shields instead. Five of these, 15 megawatt max consumption, but it's like, it barely costs any more per hit point. Or higher max hit points and higher recharge. Um, but I'm think uh, I would like to put legs on them. So if we go w uh, one tier two portable RTG, we actually lose a hundred kilowatts. We've got five hundred kilowatts. We could do one or two, probably one exoskeleton leg, and then we've got. We've got room for two more. We could probably just go four batteries. Um, so a total of six personal batteries. One portable RTG Mark II. And one exoskeleton leg and everything else is the same. Or upgraded energy shields. Having the military spiders move faster would be very helpful both... Not just getting them around, but they'd also be safer when they're dodging around uh, to avoid getting hit by the spit. Something to consider. 
Alright, how much have we got here? It's still just the genetic data. Uh, we will eventually have biochemical data, biomechanical data, and uh, biocombustion. So we're really just bottlenecked on resources to make that happen. Biomass? That's not what I was expecting. Uh, why aren't we making biomass? Because we never connected... It's actually um, contaminated bio sludge. I'm... Wait, some of these are contaminated cosmic water. I thought I was about to say the wrong thing, but we've actually got them stuck on different outputs here. Uh, so let's head over and fix up the pipes that we've missed. A overclock. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And let's see. This one's obviously got. Oh. I think. I think we know what's wrong with the contaminated bio sludge output. Is this the only thing that produces contaminated bio sludge? In the whole block? I think so. Um, okay. Just gonna do that first. And then we can get rid of this. Put this up here. That goes there. I think this isn't gonna reach. So we'll put that there. And then... This one's just plain missing a little bit of pipe. That was easy. And so is this one. That was a weird mistake to make. Alright, so biomass is not going to be a problem at this point. to see this block operational again. Let's head over here and get the first of the uh, broad site, broad bio catalog uh, data cards. Let's see. We need homodynamics facilities. One fluid in, one fluid out. I think we'll be copying one of our previous designs to get that started. Very slow physical inputs and outputs. We need to loop the experimental biomass. We don't actually have experimental biomass yet, so... Um, how do we get started with experimental biomass? So far, everything that I'm, that I'm aware of that makes experimental biomass just has a chance to spit it back out so it net consumes it. Experimental biomass. Uh, experimental bioculture. I think I might have seen somewhere where I could have made that. And everything else that make that spits out experimental biomass requires it as an input. Okay. Experimental bioculture. Nutrient vat, vitamelange, experimental genetic, and biosludge. All of these are in the rail network already. Um... 
spits out experimental bioculture and junk data card. The only question here is whether we want a dedicated block for this, or if it'll make more sense, like with nutrient vats, to have it have it deliver something directly by belt for the most part. NG. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Name and base is not working. Um, I, I haven't added a sound effect for it or something, but I'll definitely be happy to put that in there for you. Um, should we start over here? Also, do you want those 20,000 points back? Uh, how do, how would I even do that? I haven't actually had occasion to do that before. What? What are we wanting? Let's start up here. E. Uh, N. G. There was one G I remember making. Oh, there it is. Sigma. I... Oh, it's a three, isn't it? Uh, okay, how do I... How do I three? There we go. Should I include the underscore? underscore? I still have all of my points. That's weird. Maybe it just hasn't refreshed yet. Um... I'll actually just extend this RoboPort network up here in order to get that built. Fantastic. Okay, so I don't know if we have any of these on us right now. We should. All my points gone. <laughs> How do I give you them back? I've never had to do this before. Three times name in base, please. Okay. Oh, do we want the underscore? There we go. Fantastic. I think we need another sub move here as well. Satisfied with that? Okay, good. <laughs> Motorax, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Meowning Sydney Kensen von Ice Tea, good to see you again also. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Beautiful. Uh, let's actually make sure the lights are going to be powered as well. And back to the build. Uh, so purple vats. Nutrient vat, vitamin extract, and so on. I just have no idea what kind of volume we're going to need for this. If it's anything like blank data cards, we're going to need a lot. Um, looking at experimental biomass, it goes into biocombustion resistance, biosludge from, I don't think we need that. Biochemical resistance, biomechanical resistance, pressure cooking to coal. We're definitely never doing that. Uh, decompression data. And significant biomass. Okay. 
I feel like just doing a dedicated block for this. And we'll start small and just leave plenty of room for expansion. Like we've done with some other things. And let's put a block over here. It's perfect, no worries. It's a good fit. NG, NG, NG. Beautiful. Oh, I forgot I parked the military spiders somewhere a little bit dangerous. Because I got distracted thinking about upgrading them. Go this way. I don't know, I kind of feel like skipping a tier or two before I bother upgrading them, to be honest. They're already quite effective. But if we're, like, invading a really difficult planet, it might be a bit different story. I don't suppose we ever get personal lasers that have more range, because I would really like to go all in on lasers for some of these spiders. Alright, I think that's a bit much for one trip. Let's send them back for resupply after that, and then I don't have to think about them. Sydney. <laughs> Sydney Kenson von Ice T. Aim in base, no worries. Uh, I think we'll do that over here, because we don't have much of a choice otherwise. Maybe you'll make your life easy and just write Sid. We can do the whole thing. We, we can accept that challenge. That's a little bit high. Sure you can. Uh, T... Gek? Okay, we'll get to that soon. Uh, e I S T E. S I. S T. And I feel like the underscore should be five. B O N. Uh, do I have a V somewhere? Yeah, I do. Veldak. That was the first one we did, wasn't it? Thank you, Veldak. And this goes. Let's just put that here. I think. Uh, Kenson. A E N. Do we have a K somewhere? Yes, indeed. And S I D N E Y. Why? Oops. That's not right. Cine. Uh, we need a D in there. Somewhere. D. S I D N E Y. K E N S O N B O N E I S 
B double E. Fantastic. Alright, we need to extend the robopods. Uh, to get that to happen. And we need a Gek. Very important. Uh, we have a G somewhere. It's here. There it is. G. E. C. And a K. Fantastic. Oh, should I put the 97? Gecky. There we go. And RoboPorts once again back this way. All good. And an I at the end. Okay, there we go. Oh, I see. Yep. Going to span two city blocks, indeed. Uh, about one and a half, to be precise. That's fine. As long as it's not a paragraph. <laughs> All right, uh, I think we will put our requester here. Um, how many things do we need? One, two, three physicals, and they're at the same ratio. It only takes three seconds. I don't know if... Well, if we're going to have the whole block dedicated to this... Um, we could have another station for one of those items over here. Um, but supposing we do something like this. Um, how is our rate going to look? Oh, I'm trying to craft. Whoops. Genetic. Facility. Uh, we need our usual bacon. Spiders are taking a suspiciously long time to place this one. Speed modules. Uh, fluids are going to be really easy. We need at least two belts for the inputs, though. Uh, let's go for a seven. Like this one. And it looks like we could do three either side uh, quite easily. Can't rotate that. I mean, flip it. It's probably small enough that we could. Okay, I think I like where this is going. As long as we can make room for the belts. So if we move this, how many tiles away? We could actually go... I think it's three more tiles. One, two, three. One, two, three. And if I did the same thing on the other side, it wouldn't fit 
in this quarter of the rail dock, actually. It already doesn't. Not that it necessarily needs to. Let's place our... Uh, substation. Okay, so if we have... Two belts of input here. Or we could move it in a bit and have two belts of input on the side. Might be a bit more elegant, actually. Also, we could definitely... We could definitely move this any closer, actually. There's plenty of space, no matter how we go about this. Okay, so how many is this? Uh, 24 machines. This times 24. That does have the speed modules. We'd be looking at 108 junk data cards per second. 108 of everything, actually. Alright, so this... This build is definitely going to be more um, high throughput stations, and we don't need to worry about running out of space for the machines at all. Um, I have a couple of new designs for the belt unloaders. I think I forgot to blueprint it, actually. No, I put it on the Discord, even. Except it might not have been in Space Belt. Yeah, it's not in Space Belt, but I think we can... easily make it. Although, it does reduce the capacity if we use that uh, blueprint. We've got tons of space. And the main virtue of this one is it saves space, so I don't think we're going to use that in this instance. I didn't actually make a right side version of this yet, either. I don't know how many characters are allowed as a username on Twitch. But my 24 characters are already a pretty high count. Lord of Space Exploration. The 5th Earl of Nalva's Protector of... The Path Slayer of Biters and Spitters. Seems good. Um, I remember this game, Overlord. Uh... Your minions would announce you with titles. Every, every time you'd done something remarkable, you'd get another title, and it got ridiculously lengthy after a while. Um, okay, so... Tentatively, we might do it like this. Let's say that's experimental. this side. Can we pull off the same trick going to the right? So we need to merge these into one belt. Um, that would go there, perhaps? And this will be a bit different. All of them are going to be a bit different, actually. Uh, space Underground Belt doesn't go that far, so that one...
this has to go there, which means we're going to have to change our circuit wiring a little bit. Oh, that was one of the advantages of that blueprint, that the five tile one, two, three, four, five, six. No, wait, that's actually. It won't work with space belts. I was wrong. Okay, good. Okay, so I think this will go here. And we'll merge these like so. Perhaps. Um, and then that can fit there, or maybe there would look better. That one's going to be pretty normal, I guess. one is just really straightforward. Okay. And we also need to add uh, circuit wiring to detect one of these. Oh, also this should be connected. Is it not connected on this side? It is not. Okay. So that could be nutrient fats. Nutrient fat. I think you, you're not here to think, but to follow my instructions. What are we talking about? Hughes Mike, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I discovered an LTN gotcha today. The wire connections, the input light, and the output combinator on the train stop graphic are oh so close together, such that one may inter uh, inadvertently connect to the wrong one. But I gather this is a generic problem with closely spaced circuit elements. Yeah, you could definitely, um, for example, connect this to the constant combinator. And, okay, that's relatively... If you'd asked me before I connected these, where exactly does the wire stop with the graphic? I don't think I could have told you. Uh, so, like, this would be a pretty easy mistake to make. Uh, this one as well. That's a little bit further apart. It depends on the angle of the stop as well. But, yeah, always good to mouse over this to check. Alright, and my idea is... So, this is 180 items per... Well, about 180 items per second. No, it is exactly 180 items per second uh, for each of these resources. Uh, that is enough to satisfy up to 39 of these machines. If we doubled this, that would be 48. So we're definitely not going to run out of space here. Uh, how do we do 180 per second of whatever is the last thing? Bit of melange extract. Uh, I was thinking we could just... Well, the thing is, we could use the stations here uh, that already exist. Um, 
we could have like a, a 90 per second output here going to the middle and here going to the middle. Um, what's the stack size on these things? Only five. Okay. That one's 50. And bit of melange extract is 50. So it's not actually going to take that long, especially on the left side, to uh, to unload the trains here. I think it's probably fine, actually. Um, to use the same train stops for this. Alright, so left 90 per second. Upside down. Right, 90 per second, upside down. We don't need any substations these days. Uh, we'll do the lane balancer somewhere else. And... And we'll have those come together here somewhere. I think it's safe to move this down a bit. I think we'll center it in the middle. There's like three tiles of space on each side here. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. That's perfect. And we'll put one of these here. That took me an hour to check and debug that from all my stations. Oh no, how many times had you copied it? Uh, three physical inputs, two physical outputs. Uh, if we have a row of six of these, that gives us, huh, that gives us more than one belt. In fact, five of these is slightly more than one belt for the outputs, that is. Um, I didn't think part of this through. Well, let's say we just bump it down to where we're using up one belt. So it's, it would be half a belt in of each resource, half a belt out of each resources. I don't think there's room because with this layout we have to have the input and output on the same side we can easily do um We can easily do two belts of input, like so. That's not where I thought it was. So that actually lines up perfectly with this thing. Yeah. We could do it like this. And like this. I don't want to put it in the middle, but no. Uh, 
Oh, the last one won't be like that, but just worry about that later. And then we need um, one stack inserter of output should be way more than enough. But yeah, multiply this by six. Half a belt of output for each. Oh, that's even if we only multiply it by five. It's just enough to consume more than half a belt. So I think we'll remove the one at the end down here. So I'm thinking we could just... have filter inserters to output these things and then merge them together experimental bioculture whoops uh, whoops again experimental bioculture junk data card something like that each time. Also, I need to change those bits of belt. And then we merge them together. This one's going to have to be a little bit different. Actually, I'm not sure how we're going to do this one. Unless we move the beacon a bit, which is probably not that difficult, actually. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. And naturally, we don't actually need a splitter for the one at the top. Okay, so can we copy-paste flip this? That seems alright. Don't forget to block off the other ones. And then this goes here. Oh no. We're going to be we might be one tile short. I think we can actually manage which means I could have moved these in to begin with but I like that these belts are together actually all right so far so good Yeah, I like where this is going. Copy, paste, flip. And so on. I was thinking of doing the same thing as this one, except for the beacon in the middle there, but then we'd have to move the pylon substation. And on this side, that goes there. And copy paste this. 
So then we, excuse me, uh, then we would need, we've got one specific belt for each of the inputs, right? No, we need one of the belts to be shared and the other can be whatever. Hmm. We actually don't need to bring these to the middle like that. In fact, I might do better to swap them around. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a lot. Uh, eight inputs that we need to bring all of these to. I completely forgot we want to put these on shared belts. So let's do that. Um, maybe it would be better. Yeah, I, I think I would like it better if we made both of these two stations the same. And they'll both take half half and half inputs and then we don't have to do the belt spaghetti here to merge them all together um and once we do that we'll take our merge me bob and Connect those like so. And it should be pretty easy. I might have to move these down a bit, but I think we'll end up with having... It will end up having plenty of space. Okay, so tentatively, let's say... This is that. This is... Experimental genetic data. Oh. And this might go here, this might go here. Uh, if they go to the ones with the split... Wait, how many in stack inserters do we need? Uh, per second... Uh, sorry, inserters... It says 0 0.2 for each resource. So it should be more than enough, even though it's picking up from about... Broth, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so, and Amanda Kaze, thank you for the follow as well, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well also. So this will go there, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, we don't need to split these anymore. Tentatively go there. And same on the other side. That should be trivial to mirror, actually. That's perfect. And then we just need to I'm thinking it would actually be better to swap these around. So this one goes to the right. This one goes to the left. And Which is on each side. 
20 machines. That is... Yep, 90 per second. One, two, three, four. So each of them needs half a belt. So we have a splitter go to these two and a splitter go to these two. Um, right after we have a crossover here. I don't think we need a lane balancer, but it couldn't hurt. Let's do a long one. Wait, it goes there. And then... This one goes down here. This one goes here. I need to make sure there's room for these two. That's actually a really convenient spot for it. Is that the same distance? Yeah, it is. Next distance here is... That actually already is max distance. Oh, no, it's not. It's going to be one tile short. I feel like max distance here would look a little bit better. Okay. Uh, this one... Needs to go all the way down here. I think we'll just do it like this. Uh, I want it to line up with this thing, but that's not actually doing maximum length all the time. That's fine, that looks neat enough. Well, that was easier than I thought it would be, although we do still need to do a bio sludge uh, drop-off. Which we haven't really left room for, but we could always just do... Uh, the bio sludge drop off down the bottom instead. We don't have any fluid outputs that we need to do uh, for this station, so I think we'll oops, I think we'll just put it down here. That doesn't look right. Standard pickup. This will be both a pickup and a drop off. We're going to drop off um, bio sludge here. That means we don't have to worry about connecting pipes up here. Not that it was going to be difficult. So this whole thing is working out to be considerably easier than expected. Very nice. And this needs an underground. Goes there. This goes here. What's that backwards? Uh, this one is not connected yet. I think we'll just have that go over there. 
line with this one. So I think we can copy, paste, flip a lot of this stuff. That one looks a bit different. Uh, yeah, let's not copy over the unloader there. Let's just put that there first, and then copy all of this. Fantastic. And this one goes here. Whoops. Seems good. Yeah, it is going to make the trains take slightly longer to unload here, but I think we'll be fine. We do have an 8 to 8 in any case. Although, if only one train station has vats, then we're going to be consuming vats at half speed. It's no big deal. So, uh, output stations, we need a pickup station for our desired product, and one for the junk data cards. No need to do any fancy circuitry this time, since there's only one resource. Uh, only one physical resource per station. This one needs to request uh, threshold 100,000. And I'll just double check we're requesting bio sludge. Bio sludge. The rate of consumption of bio sludge here, if it were ever to need to go full speed. Uh, one block. Okay. okay, I knew we were overdoing it with this block. Uh, and leaving room for expansion for later and everything, but wow. 1.8k per second. Um, I might even... Make it so that both of these can be bio sludge drop offs. How many tiles is this? 15, 16, 17, 18. I think we know the answer to that mathematical problem. Um, so we're going to act as a physical provider and request bio sludge. Thank you for the follow, Tommy. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And welcome, Shaka. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well also. Okay. Um, these line up really well. Uh, Varank, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Wait a sec. If this is on this side of the belt, and this is on this side of the belt, that's already perfect. Uh, we can actually just put a filter right here. So, vats are going to go on one belt, and... Junk dart cards are going to go on the other belt. What are they? There we go. Because they're already going to be on opposite sides. Okay. 
that. I mean, experimental fire sludge. Let's say on this side. Uh, for five of these, looking at half a belt of each. What's the total throughput if we have this block going full speed? 40. Four belts of each resource. That's going to be a little bit of a nuisance um, to deal with. Let's do a 4 to 4 balancer. Can't remember where I put it. Here it is. I've got a corner version of a 4 to 4 balancer. So that's going to be one full belt of each. That's going to be half a belt of each. Half a belt of each, that's two full belts of each, that makes sense. Um, where's the output here? It's this one. I think we'll just put this here. And put this here. And put this here. So we need that to go there, that to go there, that to go there, and that to go there. Something's missing. Um, which side is the junk data going to be on here? The left side. And which side is the junk data going to be on here? Wait, what? There we go. Uh, on the right side? Except that that's connected in a bad way. So we should get those two to merge. Here actually. Whoops. Um, so this one is Yeah, these two will have junk data cards on opposite sides of the belt. Bringing them together makes a lot of sense. Actually, because of that, we definitely don't need a splitter at all. So I'll just do it like that. Except that should go here, actually. And we can make the... Middle one, go to the outside here. Something like that, just tentatively. I should go over there physically, I keep looking back and forth. Wait, I'm in the wrong spot. I actually was already at this block. Now I can move the spiders more easily. Uh, so we similarly want... Probably which side of the belt is junk here on the top side, so we can't just do it like that, do it this way. And 
bring that over here. And last but not least, I think this will be a bit tidier. Okay. Now we just need to do something similar with... Oh, that's that. Wait, which side am I... I want this side to be jumped out of card. Yeah, that should be fine. So that's... We'll start from the very end. I think we'll have to do the same thing. Whereby we bring the two belts together. That's going to be belt one. Uh, this is belt two. Belt three is very straightforward. And belt four, uh, we need to merge these two somehow. Probably offset this a little bit. That's not looking terribly convenient, but I can definitely work around it. And we need. Wait, which side? Vats will be on uh, this side of the belt. So the right side facing down. So that would keep it on the same side of the belt. Therefore, we can just connect this like so. Just double check. That's here will be on the left. Yep, that'll be fine. Oh. Let's copy this over here. Just for the symmetry. And I think that's basically it. We just want to Tidy this up a little bit, I suppose. That's a pretty good fit. And I feel like this would look better if it just goes there. Can I make these line up? That's good. Same thing with these ones. That's not quite going to work. We'll move these over a couple of tiles at least. Thank you for the follow, Bob Ba... Bob Ba... Fisher? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Copy this here. Not like that. Yeah, I guess this is more consistent with the whole build. And that fits really well anyway. Uh, 
Not bad. Okay, so obviously this goes here. That goes there. Goes there. Copy it to the other side. Although, just to be consistent with the rest of these. Point that, da point that down that way. So let's just double check. Um, we're offering the physical items that are in these chests. We're demanding 120k bio sludge. Uh, our product that we're making here is experimental bioculture. Wait, what? Experimental bioculture. And we are requesting a sludge. We're going to have a similar station name for this one, except... Well, no, this is just a... Wait, what am I saying? Um, this combinator is going to be the same. And we're going to be requesting... Uh, we're going to be getting rid of junk data card. And... Sludge Requester. I think these are already set up correctly. We can switch those on now. Uh, we also need some stack filters over here. We also, also need to make sure we tell LTN what's in these stations. We also, also, also need to make sure that's connected. We also, 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 also need to do the wiring for the balanced unloaders. Um, I think we'll do it like this, since we can't do it on the same side each time. Are the pump in the correct way for requesting? They are not. Thank you. Uh, Vario, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's send our spiders back to the middle so that they'll build this. And what are we requesting here? That's uh, experimental genetic and vitamelange extract. Vitamelange extract. For our generic uh, combinatorless balanced unloader, we just read the hand contents of all of these inserters, read these bits of belt, and say everything has to equal zero. And that'll make them all swing at the same time and wait for each other. For these ones down here, it's just slightly more complicated. It's the exact same thing, except we have to look for specific items. Looks like I already did this part, I'm surprised. those wires over here as well. Shift click because that part was different. And that should be all it takes. This is a belt balancer, not a lane balancer, so it's not going to mess up our 
which things are on which side of the belt. Uh, we do have a lane balance of well, the Vitamal Lunge Extract. Don't know how necessary that is, but it's just one item, so it's fine. Okay, so we've got enough room for seven train loans of Vitamal Lunge Extract. Three and a bit for each of these. But I think we'll just request two of each. What do that stack to? Only five. Uh, so 800. Uh, that's actually one train load. So we want 1600 vats. These stack to 50, so it's going to be that times 10. And that is experimental genetic data. Uh, Vitamelange extract also stacks to 50. Extract. And that's going to be the same on the other side. Station name is that uh data of the experimental genetic variety and extract quester and I think we're ready to switch this thing on shouldn't matter which side oh uh, it'll kind of matter a little bit which side this is on because the Vitamelange extract, uh, each station will only go to one side. But that's fine, I think. Uh, we need some more genetic facilities. If we want this thing to go full speed, I'm not terribly concerned about that, to be honest. Uh, at least for now. And last but not least, we need these pipes to connect to each other. How should I go about it? Um, this seems an obvious spot. Seven, eight, nine. Fantastic. That's actually a little bit unfortunate. Um... I guess we could just do this. I can live with that, at least that's what I tell myself. Very handy having the wire from the substation measuring exactly where the middle is. I like that a lot. So this, yep, that'll line up with this one. And then... And I tell you... You can't live with that. Oh no. I may need help. Um... This goes here... And here... And here... And here? And then it's just a question of how many genetic facilities we want to uh, bother to build here. But suffice to say, we have plenty of room for expansion. Um, none of those have been built yet. I kind of want to just remove the most of the inserters and genetic facilities and we'll let the rest uh, fill up where it may well not that's not quite what I meant um, the 
Does this already have any resources? Nutrient bats, I'm not too worried about that. Why are, why are there two beacons here? Oh, there was already one. That's why. Okay, so that should paste there. Oh, they've actually run out of space belt as well. Alright, so we've got a very, very clear... Uh, procedure for upgrading our throughput here. Fantastic. What are we delivering now? More vats. And there's the extract. What's taking so long? With the extract. Yeah, this looks a bit suspicious. Um, I think this should have been a chain signal. Uh, I just have a feeling that that's the case. I'll just get you to move here momentarily. And you're still confused. Oh. This might do it, actually. Nope. 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 We didn't actually change the signal yet. That's the problem. Okay. <laughs> Let's get over there and sort that out. Um, this might be a little bit more complicated to fix now. Bonk. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, let's send this train over here for the moment. And... Actually, maybe I shouldn't have done that yet, because this one is going to... Oh! God, they're all doing it. No, stop. Stop. Cylind uh, Cylindral? Nope. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, oh, it's it's fine. Oh, It'll be fine. Okay, we're almost there. Once we swap that signal, it should be pretty easy to fix this. Uh, send this one over here again. And there we go. Send you over... Why can't I... Oh, it's not on automatic. That's why I can't. Give it orders like this. Okay, go over here, please. And this train should now be able... It's got no path. Okay. Uh, that... This is why. I guess... Oh, how long have you been sitting here? I, there's like one thing that we've made up here that needs heat shields, and I think it's only at the mall, possibly. That poor train. It's been waiting for a while. Uh, we need to put you somewhere like here to get you to be able to turn around. Uh... Picking up beryllium plate is not what I had in mind. Please take it back to the trash. And that'll get sorted out. One jar? <laughs> yeah. Johan, Johan Anderson, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so I think our trains are alright now. Still one train on manual? Uh, true. Thank you. Good catch. Fantastic.
Let's head back to our mall for a moment since we're already here. And we didn't actually get... Uh, let's bring our spiders up this way since this didn't get built automatically for whatever reason. I think it's because the... Yeah, this pylon substation is actually far enough away that the bots can't reach it. And the little bit of charge that roboports start with, the bots all wasted it on dropping lights uh, instead of dropping the pylon substation first. So that's why that didn't get built. How to lay three belts in a compact 12 beacon layout. Uh, I assume these are vanilla beacons. Okay, are you able to go where you need to go? Seems good. Fantastic. Should be no way. Well, I hope there is. Uh, do you guys still have scaffolding? Yes. May as well make another block. I feel like expanding in this direction. So, let's do that. The middle way is blocked. I gather you're not referring to the trains. Okay. Um, I kind of like the look of that build as well on the map. So this is for experimental bioculture. And I'm fairly confident that this is going to have... If we were to build all of the genetic facilities that fit here, um, I think it's going to be enough for the entire playthrough, quite likely. So we still need bio sludge. I'm a little bit surprised by that. Did we connect this? We did. Request threshold 120k bio sludge. Request threshold 120k bio sludge. Um, everything seems to be in order. So, what's our situation with, uh, with Biosludge? It is... It's all being consumed by this loop before it gets pumped over here. Whoa. Um... Okay, I remember a bunch of these machines weren't operating earlier, so that might have something to do with it. Uh, it's only blank data cards that are difficult to get here, and that's for making genetic data. I think... I think all of our biosludge is going to genetic data. Let's see, biosludge is holy crap um net rate we're consuming 775 bio sludge per second uh and that's weird i thought i thought it didn't take that much it's because we're making so much genetic data i bet we're making it really, really fast. Um, so that state of affairs is not going to continue um, indefinitely. Hmm. I kind of want to limit uh, genetic data until we have some bio sludge. With the shape of these pipes here, I haven't made it easy on myself to do that, necessarily. 
but I think we can figure something out. Um, if we put a pump right about here, and connect this like so, and get rid of these two pipes, and then connect uh, connect to the bio sludge storage here and just make sure we have a certain amount before we decide to make genetic data. Uh, then we can export bio sludge before uh, making genetic data necessarily. Dedicated bio sludge build is needed, possibly. Um, the thing is, in the, uh, in the main bus build, uh, we had net positive, um, bio sludge production, but we've literally got, like, one speed module and two speed modules here in these, uh, facilities. Uh, and we are, like, exporting bio sludge. We could pick up bio sludge from the main bus as well if we want to. Uh, where even is bio sludge? I think it only goes here and we never actually... I don't know that we ever actually used the bio sludge on the fluid bus here, except as an output from the decontamination facilities. Yeah. Okay. So it's literally just the machines in the bioscience that need it. Thank you for the follow, Nixa. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And Cat, thanks for the rate. Welcome to you also. How was your stream today? Welcome, Raiders. Uh, let me just make sure I didn't miss anything in chat just there. Dedicated by switch build, maybe. We'll see. Uh, what you mean, oof and direct insertion? Oh, for NG's build. Okay. How are you guys doing? What did you get up to? Uh, Hello, Knight. Friend loves that game. It's quite difficult, right? Or well, parts of it are, at least. Are we four minutes and twenty seconds from spaceships? Uh, yes. Okay, so... We could put a display here. little underground pipe is a little bit annoying, but I don't think this is going to reach. Do we not have lights? Or are the spiders being weird again? I should have lights on me. That's weird. Oh, my personal logistics are switched off. Okay, let's, let's make some lights. Uh, I'm just looking for some excuse to connect wires all the way across here. That's not going to look weird. Uh, I guess we need a constant combinator to make it green. And then... This is... Uh, 16 lights, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's so close. No, we're doing this. We're going to do... Lights go here, uh, green for bio sludge. Use colors, 
anything greater than something. And we're reading the amount of bone sludge we have. So... With 24 of these, we're going to start with greater than 1,000. 2,000. 3,000. 4,000. I wish there was some procedural way to do this. You can set it up with the arithmetic combinator so that you can have a generic version of this that uses a multiplier. But then you've got an unnecessary combinator as part of the build. Okay. Um, also... We're reading this tank here to decide whether we can export bio sludge. So it's not going to be totally full until the entire rail network is full of bio sludge. Um, I probably could have had this as both a bio sludge pickup and a bio sludge drop off, actually. We could have had one pump facing one way, one pump facing the other way, and maybe it's possible to use LTN's signals to decide whether we're picking up or dropping off. But this is fine. Okay, 15k, 16, 17, 18, 19... 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Cool. Now we just need to decide how much bio sludge we should have. I think, considering how easily we can consume all of the bio sludge. We're not particularly in danger of overfilling this, so let's set this to like maximum 24,500. And I want to make sure we have, let's say at least 6,000 uh, bio sludge locally. Um, in this tank before we start making genetic data. Also, perhaps we could speed up these machines. We do have a lot of... Uh, a lot of electricity to spare right now. Um, so, how fast can we go where the inserters will be able to keep up? Why don't we just go full speed and see what it looks like? We're bottlenecking on inputs, but then again we only have long arm inserters here. Uh, let's put some stack inserters. And see how that goes. Spiders are taking their sweet time. There we go. Um, I just realized we only produce 13.6 biomass per second from here uh, if it's going at full speed. So we're going to need a lot of storage for that to matter at all. But, considering this is idle most of the time... Oh, whatever. Let's 
so what are we missing here? Bioculture. Wait, we need bioculture. We need genetic data for bioculture. Okay. Then we need bioculture for uh, the growth facilities. So this breaks the loop. So really what we need to do, instead of limiting bio sludge coming into here, um, is we need to limit the output of genetic data. Uh, we, we need plenty of genetic data here, but for it to go down here, we need to prioritize. So, uh, we'll put this here, I th think. Wait a sec. This isn't supposed to... These two inserters are totally unnecessary. Are they not? Oh, those are blacklists. Yeah, that's everything except genetic data. So, bioculture and junk data card goes on this belt. That's fine. I probably could have... 44 bioculture per second? Wow. Okay, it was really unnecessary changing the speed modules here. We're never going to keep up with that overall, not even remotely. Uh, so negative 70% power. This is already super fast. Um, we don't need this pump. That's a little bit easier to see than the way it was before. Uh, but what we do need to do is... I hope I can connect this wire up here, but I don't think so. We could maybe piggyback off of a couple of these inserters. Yeah, so this is condition none. Uh, and this one is bio sludge greater than let's say 10,000 fantastic so that should get our loop working and we won't export genetic data until and until we've gone past the point where we're exporting bio sludge. Cool. So that should... How fast are we making bio sludge here? 204 per second doesn't seem that bad. Um... That, cons that only consumes 6.8 biomass per second. We can produce 13.6. So I think we will speed this up a bit, actually. Until we can consume it all. Oops. 10 per second. 11.2 per second. Uh... We're actually still net positive on biomass here. So I don't think we needed um, two inserters, uh, two stack inserters for each of these. In fact, a fast inserter is probably enough. I want to see. Yep, a fast inserter is enough. And it's enough to keep up with the... Uh, ...contaminated scrap already. 
Well, that is surprising. Um, we are actually going maximum speed here uh, for the bio sludge. All right, so how fast would we be making? That's actually 44 genetic data per second. So the belt wouldn't limit the consumption speed of the bio sludge. Um, we're still potentially net consuming a thousand bio sludge per second uh, within this block if we didn't have the stuff in place to organize it. Now that I think about it, um, there isn't actually a reason to limit bio sludge, is there? Is there anything in this block that spits out... We do spit out contaminated biosludge as a side effect, but that goes to a different block to be dealt with. There's no... The only thing that outputs biosludge itself is biosludge from biomass. Yeah, so there's no reason, actually. Um, to limit bio sludge production. Okay, that's good to know. Hopefully we'll see it start to accumulate eventually. We are seeing uh, the amount in these tanks increase already. 10,000 times 8, 80,000. We're getting close to a delivery. Let's get the spiders to drop off this rail since they're already here. And over this way as well. We'll send them back to the mall after that. And what was it uh, that made me notice that uh, bio sludge wasn't flowing? I think it was over here. Yeah, we haven't had a bio sludge delivery down here. And I think it's, it's not the only thing, uh, the only reason that we're not producing it just yet. Turn that one off. Oh, we already got the Vita Melange. And that's the only one that's sensitive as to which side we deliver this stuff on. So it doesn't make a difference if I turn that off. Um, that's fine. We could probably get rid of those undergrounds at the very end. But it's no big deal. Right, so we should see uh, experimental bioculture in the rail network sooner or later, without touching anything else, theoretically. Get this nasty placing of many rail signals out of the way. And while that's happening, let's check on Nalvis. Our military spiders appear to have come home. That's not the right spot. Let's get them to go on another little adventure. I think there's some expansions they need to clear, actually. The little bases here. Uh, 
I'm really looking forward to having Nalvis completely cleared out. There's going to be a lot of um, iridium that we don't have to put into the weapon delivery cannons as well. Among other things. We'll clear this out as well on this trip. Okay, back you go. It's not going to run into water. spiders on the way back. Fantastic. So what if we... Oh, we've got some bots following us as well. We'll have to pick them up on the way back. Uh, we've completed biochemical. That's part of the first one. Uh, biocombustion. Experimental genetic. We haven't done experimental genetic yet. Wait a sec. Experimental genetic data just requires two of the existing data cards. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. And it's actually... It actually just turns them into experimental genetic, like two becomes two. So we'll have to beef up biochemical and... Well, I don't think we're going to have to beef up genetic data. We we can already make that very, very quickly. Um, biochemical data. Uh, we've already got a potential throughput that's much faster than um, other resources. Uh, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. In fact, maybe we should just... What is this? Oh, you're trying to pick up... Wait. Yeah, this is... The... Pumps are backwards again. Okay. Um, maybe we could and should... Build... Uh, which one was it? Experimental genetic data. We could put that here. And have uh, this thing priority output to the experimental genetic data build. Although, the trouble is with vanilla chests lined up like this to go into a train station. Uh, we can't really take from this storage... So, we could set it up so that we have an output for, uh, we could do an output for experimental genetic data here, and we'll add a little bit of circuitry to make sure that each of these are balanced. Make sure there's always as much experimental as biochemical and vice versa. And then we just do a drop-off up here for genetic data. Um, and we don't even need any more fluids or anything. And there's no... There's no fluid in, there's no fluid out, there's no junk data, nothing. Very straightforward. Let's go do that now. So we're going to move this... over here. Uh, biochemical data. This one is going to be experimental genetic data. And... We can fit six of these. Oh, 
on each side. We need to change the recipe, of course. Let's let those bots catch up with us. Pug. Just randomly check the... Oh. Wow. I was just saying, I'm just going to randomly check that this is connected properly. And it turns out it isn't. Not bad. Uh, also, these chests are not connected. So this is another block that I forgot to... Double check and update after removing. Whoops. That was already fixed. Okay, good. So, uh, what is this? Quantum phenomenon data. There's been uh, 21,000 available for who knows how long, and the rail network hasn't known that it's there. Well, thank you very much, bots, for pointing that out. I guess I should look for more of these little mistakes. This one's been fixed already. That can get deleted. Uh, this one seems fine. This is fine. This is fine. How much thermo fluid do we have? Quite a lot, it seems. All of the... All of the coolants are full. That's good. So it seems we're having no trouble whatsoever keeping, with, uh, keeping up with that now. I didn't even get around to adding beacons to this. Um, we're going to have to shuffle things around a little bit to make beacons fit well here. Anyway, let's get started with this build. Experimental genetic data. Two physical in, one physical out. It almost seems too good to be true. Um, it's just too easy for something that we do in space. And we could probably... fit that there as well. do the output. Wait, what's the rate going to be? If we have 24 of these... Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, that's pretty easy, actually. 217 per second. I don't think we need that much. Um, so this is 16.32 per second, and just one of these with the beacon can do 9 per second. If we remove the beacon, or maybe we could take advantage of the beacon down here. I think we'll do that. We'll just do a couple of these machines. Does he send up all the ores with rockets or already processed material? Uh, Gamza, or Gamza, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. To answer your question, uh, where possible, I... This is going to have to go here. That's a little bit awkward. Um, where possible... I do things on the ground. Uh, because you can't use productivity modules in space. Except for in the science labs. 
D Hex, your title says Space Exploration Part 112. Whoops. Uh, what part are we up to? Don't tell me I forgot to change that twice. Announcements. 115. Oh my goodness. Uh, well, twice is not the number of times I forgot to update that. Okay, title updated. There we go. Thanks, Sigma. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff where you can't use productivities in space where you can on the ground. Uh, so we do that on the ground where we can. Alright, so in that case, I guess we are going to end up with a symmetrical build whereby... Oops, I still want to copy this. I think we are going to end up with a symmetrical build whereby we could double this later if we want to. The only question is how we fit this part together. I could have the... Uh, I could not have the output squeezed through up there, actually. Hmm. I could do it through here. Um, so that goes there. That goes there. Move that over to the middle-ish. And get rid of this I saw. Turn all of this around. That'll still occupy both sides of the belt. Fantastic. So I think just one of these under a beacon is probably going to be enough. Let's find out. Why do we only have, like, two of these still? Genetic facility. Um, we're definitely requesting... To make genetic facilities, are we not? It's possible that we're not doing that. Okay. Genetic facility. 50. Yeah, it looks like... It looks like we weren't. Although currently we've got a surprising amount of stuff we're still trying to make. Uh, including repair packs? The order of... The order of the signals that it shows here is not the arbitrary order of signals that it's... Uh, that the combinators are picking. That it's trying to craft. Um, I don't think we can make any more spiders right now, so why don't we calm down on that a little bit. Okay, so we need genetic data as well as biochemical. Um, I think what we'll do is have a train stop here. And we'll just have this go as high as we need it to, uh, in order to have signals on this side. So that goes there. Do a... How fast is this going to consume? 
Only 4.5 per second for the genetic data. That is a quarter of what this can produce. I would really like to fit two of these here, if I can. We might have to move this pipe a little bit. That's fine. And this pipe could get moved as well. Yeah, I think we'll just take directly from this belt, to be honest. I'm just trying to think the most succinct way to do the circuitry if we want to stop these from picking up the biochemical data. That lines up way too well, I'm surprised. Oh, it's the Combinator's fault. Yeah, I was going to say I'm surprised I didn't connect this this way before. That's going to get in the way of our station. Let's see. Drop off. And go this way. just realized I was muted. Sorry about that. Um, we could probably... That's a weird bit of belt, uh, pipe. We could probably have the contaminated cosmic water fit through here, actually. A nine won't connect. This here, that's contaminated cosmic water. We put this here, and this here, and then we can get rid of these. Why are the underground pipes so short? I don't know, they just are. If anything, it should be easier to use so-called underground things in space. Since up and down don't really make sense. We can go any direction we want. Um, does this reach? It does not. It's on purpose, so if other pipes are visible, like, not hide fluids. I don't like the look of space pipes. If other pipes are visible, not hide the fluids. I'm not entirely sure I understand. As long as we're fiddling with the aesthetics of the pipes, let's do that. This shouldn't be here. Um, 
Let's do that as well. Okay, so now we've got space to to put as many of these as we want, actually. Or at least three or four. Um, I think we'll move this pipe as well. Figure that out a little bit later. Fantastic. And inserters. I think uh, fast inserters should be more than enough. Where am I going to do the outputs? Uh, I guess we could belt weave it. I don't want to do that, but. Might have to. Yeah, let's um let's put this through here. Hold on. What's gonna be the better way to do this? That goes there. That goes there. And we need to one of these is going to be input, one is going to be output. If output goes here, that goes there. It's not... It's technically not belt weaving. Um, and that goes there. I think we did it. Beautiful. Okay, just as planned. This is fine. Um, I kind of want to put the inserters... This is actually a nice little pattern. It's consistent. And we're putting these inserters where there's no inserters fighting for them. So now we've got our output belt. Um... Bring that down to here. That actually lines up perfectly. Fantastic. Uh, this should actually say... Oh, it does already. Biochemical data. And this will be experimental genetic data. Cool. Uh, we need our station. It gives factory distinct look and feel to have pipes visible, and I think that was an intention to make it visible like that in space, more steampunk feeling. So it's an aesthetic choice. Um, what am I doing? I need an unloader, not a loader. I'll just double check this, but I'm pretty sure... We could use fast inserters here if necessary, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be more than enough. 36.267 per second if all four of these were active, going full speed. Although that would consume more than uh, the biochemical data that we can supply here. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. 18. Versus 16.32. Uh, so realistically we're going to need 30 to 33 per second. Um, I'm pretty sure this loader is going to be fine. 
And if it isn't, we have some room over here. That should be filter inserter. Alright, so connect this up here. Uh, make this a drop off, actually. And we're looking for tick data. Fantastic. Uh, Combinatorless balanced unloader. All of the inserters swing at the same time by checking if there's anything in their hands or on the belt. And we're requesting genetic data. Let's set this before the train comes. There we go. So there should be a train scheduled to bring the genetic data here quite quickly. We've got actually only 5.2 thousand. I think genetic data was taken somewhere else. Um, yeah, here it is. I knew we'd made quite a lot of genetic data already, but... We kind of stopped because we were consuming bio sludge too quickly. We've run out of bioculture because... Oh. Huh. Uh... Okay. Uh, the sis... The, the thing I put in place... This is set to none, this is set to none, so that's not the problem. The thing I put in place to not export genetic data if we're low on bio sludge uh, stopped this thing because there's nowhere to output the genetic data. I think we just need to add... Okay, so this green wire only reads... Bio sludge. We're gonna put this here. Read belt contents hold. And we're gonna set this to genetic data less than eight. Same thing on the opposite side. And I'll temporarily let this go through. Bioscience has some really complicated interconnected systems. Did I set this as a super high priority? I did not. And yet we still have blank data cards. Okay, so I'll enable this again, or disable it rather, and okay, so this one's stopped outputting for now. I think that's working. bottlenecked on bio sludge. Yeah, I think that's it. Well, that was surprisingly complicated. Just limiting the output of genetic data caused this thing to stop working properly, even though we set it up so that with the shape of the belts it's going to prioritize consuming uh, the genetic data that this machine spits out. Uh, but still, just having this thing able to output all the time and getting backed up uh, caused that to stop working. Okay. 
we are gaining bio sludge. Fantastic. I wonder if there's some bio sludge at. There would be some bio sludge at this station. But I got the pumps around the wrong way again. I've been doing that quite a lot. Wait. Yeah, no, it is a it is requesting, so it's going into the storage tanks. Okay, cool. So now all that's missing from here is experimental genetic data. That's what we're working on down here. Um, we should have a few genetic data facilities now. Seems like we're still trying to make 60 of them. Because we don't have nutrient vats. I think I remember I delivered some of those up here manually. So I may have forgotten to... Yeah, we're not requesting them. That's the problem. Okay. Nutrient vats uh, come from here. 5 times 40 times 4 is 800. That is a train load. So we're going to request those here. I think 70% aesthetics and 30% challenge. It's definitely more challenging when you can't use underground belts to jump over a machine. Uh, that's definitely the case. Okay. Um, this is actually a much more clean way to get the pipe through. Oops. So I wanted to send the spiders back to get more genetic facilities, but we won't get any here until the vats are delivered. I might just go pick some up myself, since it takes very few uh, to make the genetic facilities, at least in relatively small quantities. And that's all I can carry. Good to see Biosides churning along again. It'll be a while before we output the uh, genetic data again. Oh. This isn't jammed again, is it? I think it is. Yeah, I think that little circuit didn't do the job. Um, maybe... Or it's at least very close to jamming. Maybe we should read this bit of belt instead. Actually, I don't think that's gonna... We'll say if it's greater than four. Uh, it has to be less than four, rather. What the... I don't think that one's connected properly. It's really hard to see how it's connected. Read belt contents hold, that's the problem. Okay. So basically it's only going to output if there's less than half a belt of genetic data right here. And that should be enough to make sure this thing can always output. Especially considering the stack inserter can pick up the nine at a time that it's outputting. Oop, that's right. Artillery shell range is very, very, very slowly moving toward its conclusion. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be draining my resources into that. 
at this stage of the game. Alright, so there's our vats. And there's our genetic facilities as soon as we get space assembly machines. Apparently we're out of big electric motors. That's weird. Big electric motors. We are requesting them up here. Yeah, I think we've run out of big electrics. Uh, we are requesting them in the rail network, right? 2,000. Request stack threshold 40. Um, we are. Big electric motors. We've got plenty of them here. Why don't we just bump up the, uh, request... For one long train. And we should probably increase the... Oh, the train limit here is already three. So there should be a train or two queuing to get here right now. Considering I'm seeing a train dropping off here all the time, but apparently not. There we go, big electric motors. Even though I just bumped up the request to 8,000, it's just a short train going to pick up 2,000. That's a bit weird. Okay. Uh, hold on. It does have 8,000 available here. Yeah, it definitely does. 8.2k input signals. Oh well. That'll get the job done. We should have just a few uh, genetic facilities now. This'll help. Okay. That should be everything that we need for the moment. Let's bring this back down here. And I think I'll follow them. Meanwhile, on Nervous, spiders are doing spider things. Still got plenty of ammo. Actually, just how much ammo do they have? The front one is, of course, out of ammo. But most of them that I'm mousing over have, like, 700. I think we could probably get them to do a little bit more before they go back. Like this area. We'll make them go a little bit slower since uh, the ones at the front won't shoot as much. I watch you play, then try to play myself and lose interest? Rip. Uh, what kind of game are you playing? Like, what... What settings? What mods? There's always a way to change it up a bit. Or you could just take a break from Factorio for a bit. Factorio, before I streamed it, uh, was a game that I would play for a while... Like, once or twice a year, I would play it quite a lot, for a while, and then stop. Same, just restarting is such a pain. Yeah, there's actually a mod called Skip First Hour, which I find entirely understandable. Basically just gives you enough equipment uh, to speed up the parts we've all seen. Okay, that's 
probably enough. They are taking some actual damage here. Get all these little expansions we found on the way back. Fantastic. Once you clear, uh, they won't respawn. We do have Biter expansion on, but once they're off of Nalvis, they're not coming back. Unless there's some kind of Biter Meteor event I'm not aware of or something like that. Uh, do we not have genetic... Oh, that's right. Yeah, we don't have genetic data available just yet. We're actually painfully close. We've got 6.5 thousand. Um, but first we need to get to, uh, how much is it? 10k bio sludge in this tank. We're halfway there. Oh, now we're actually bottlenecked on, I was going to say we're bottlenecked on cosmic water, but the train arrived. Currently playing SnowRunner. Thanks a lot, that mod looks interesting. No worries. If you pinned through to bots, then I feel quite good that I didn't skip it or use mods to make it easier. Yeah, it's up to you how you play. Currently, uh, I cleared an area and after a while new bases there. Yeah, um, by default, um, in the, in the settings when you create a new game, um, there is a setting that is called Biter Expansion, and what that does, where am I going to put this, uh, what that does is a group of biters will... Hold on a sec. Uh, a group of biters from a base will, like, form a party and go and... I, I think they literally, like, convert some of the biters into spawners and worms and stuff. So all of these really small bases that you're seeing, even though it's really far from the spawn point, uh, those are definitely expansion bases. I've never seen the... Like, once you've cleared out an area, if the biters expand back into it, without some kind of mod, I've never seen them, you know, end up creating the thick carpet of spawners that you see uh, sometimes. Have you heard of, looked at, played Factory Town? What is that? Different factory game? Let's turn this off. Just want to be absolutely sure I'm not asking too much of our spiders right now. They've still got a lot of repair packs, although they might lose the last of their bots at this rate. Yeah, the bots are dying. Maybe I should have been more careful. Does this one have bots? It does have a few. But uh, I think I've seen enough. Um, I'll send the spiders back. I will send them through some of the small bases though. Alright, back to orbit. This is connected. This is good. And... Uh... I also want to set something up. Whereby... Am 
might have to change the wiring here. If I use red and green wire... It, I, I might have to swap the colors of the wires for this entire side to make this happen without an extra combinator. But I think what I'll do is... Red wire here. I need to, I need it to reach across this whole thing. No, I, I think I can see what I'm going to do here. Step one, remove all of these wires. And we're going to replace them with their opposite color. Um, it's going to be a little bit tedious. I think it'll be easier, honestly, if I just build it from scratch. Arithmetic Combinator goes here. Must inserters. Connect the chests with red wire. Copy paste for this part. Uh, connect the inserters with red wire. Don't forget these bits. Green wire goes to the chest. Setting is everything less than or equal to zero. Uh, positive number comes from the chest. Negative average comes from the arithmetic combinator. Those two get added implicitly, so zero is effectively the average. Copy paste that part, bring it across. And then red wire goes here. And green wire connects this one. And then we're going to connect the green wire from all of this. And just like when you connect it to an, uh, an inserter, the red and green signals are going to be added up here. Um, so we're just going to say... We're going to say that's the wrong piece of belt, actually. And disconnect this one. And this one. Uh, we're only going to put... Oh. I forgot the part where these inserters are on the other side of this belt. Uh, but what I was going to do is say... Genetic... Uh, experimental genetic data has to be greater than or equal to biochemical data in order to put this through. So normally that would keep these balanced, but we're going to have to come up with something else. That's wrong. If I send a large signal of biochemical data um, to these, It'll have the effect of switching them off. But that'll take at least two combinators. I decided to say... Well, actually I'd have to compare those as well first. Hmm... This says less than or equal to zero. I could make it less than or equal to something else. Experimental genetic data. And we could maybe do something clever here. Each divided by negative 24 output experimental genetic data. So the negative average would be expressed as experimental generic, generic, experimental genetic data, weirdly enough. And then 
experimental genetic data has to be less than or equal to zero. That that doesn't make sense. So if we have a positive signal of these, it would stop this from picking it up. That's not what we're looking for at all. Trying to smuggle logic into a few combinators uh, leads you down some weird paths sometimes. I think I should probably just add the combinators that I already talked about. We know how to do this. So we're going to have a decider combinator. And it's going to say... Uh, experimental genetic has to be greater than... Or, excuse me. Uh, has to be greater than or equal to... Uh, this stuff. At least we still have a use for our wires here. Um, experimental genetic has to be greater than or equal. Actually, let's put it so that the one on the left is on the is on the left. And if that is the case, we're going to output something. We want some signal, uh, that's right, I said if we give this a big number for biochemical data, it's going to effectively disable it without changing any of this other circuitry. So if we output input count of biochemical data, That might do it, actually. So currently we have, like, 7.4k here. The amount that we have here is definitely going to be more than the average. And this is receiving the negative average. So it's going to receive... Yeah, we can do this with one combinator. Um... It's going to receive the total biochemical data as a positive value, which is going to be enough to switch, uh, I was going to say it's going to be enough to switch all of these off. Apparently that's not happening. Uh, if biochemical data, which is 7.4k, oh, yeah, we'll set it to greater than or equal. So if it's greater than or equal, we want this to stop. Well, let's just say greater than. If biochemical data is greater than experimental genetic data, output the entirety of these chests worth of biochemical data as a positive value here. This is looking for a negative value or a zero value to be enabled. So because we don't have any experimental genetic data, the balanced loader is switched off. We'll confirm it with a constant combinator. Um, I'm glad it wasn't a complete waste to swap the colors of the wires here. It really looks weird. It's very much not what I'm used to, the way these wires look here. Um... So here we're going to say, pretend that we've got, um, let's say 7.2k genetic, experimental genetic, no effect. And once we bump that up to like 7,500, those switch on again. Fantastic. That's perfect. Okay, I'm really happy I was able to do that with just one more combinator. I would be extra happy if those little wires there weren't crossing over each other. 
So until we get experimental genetic data, um, it's going to fill the belt up with this stuff, and it's only going to be available to these machines. Which can consume at a rate of... Uh, whoops. Uh, less than one fast inserter. That's good. Although the output is actually more than a fast inserter. Cool. We're still waiting on genetic data for testing this. We've got 6.5k, that's more than we had before, I th think. This seems to have jammed again. Yep, it's jammed. Um, maybe I should just set this to genetic data equals zero. I mean, the whole point of this little shaped belt thing uh, was so that... Let me just enable this again. Uh, was so that, that... To show that there was a way to solve this without a circuit. But since this problem is a little bit more advanced... So we should see this part empty, which we are... I think it's working now. Although I said that before. But yeah, it's continuing to work with the genetic data output being empty all the time. So I think this will probably continue to work. We should see this inserter do something relatively soon, yep. But then it's not going to swing again for a while. Perfect. So what is it waiting on each time? We're not... Uh, we're not outputting the biocultures fast enough, and or we're not inputting the nutrient bats fast enough. We need 10, that's two stacks, but these stack inserters are just sitting there, like, waiting to do their thing. think it's so hmm we might need another one of these uh, even though there's only seven here and we need ten to start the recipe it seems the inserters are not doing their thing until the outputs are completely empty and it's causing a delay that really shouldn't happen the output. The output. Noxyway game. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, we're gonna try just beefing up the output. Um, it does say it's capable of doing 44 per second. 44.8. That's enough to fill a belt. The output is bottlenecked on half a belt of output right here. So it's never going to go as fast as it's supposed to be able to. Um, maybe we should genetic facility. Maybe we should efficiency module this. See how fast this is going to be. 
so this is still... 16 genetic data per second. Wow. Uh, that's quite fast. 32 between the two of them. And this would be... 32 bioculture per second. We're still bottlenecked on... Um, the output belt. We're just not... Oh. And now it's actually stopping because... I wonder if it was like this before, actually. We're not actually consuming the... Um, uh, the biomass quickly enough. Maybe we should use more speed in these two. I mean, we probably don't need more speed for the nutrient vats, but this one is covering these two growth facilities. Um, this one isn't doing anything for some reason. Hold on. You're stuck on outputting genetic data, but... I set both of these up the same way, and this one isn't having the same problem. It's probably... Uh, that's not actually the problem at all. Um, I was gonna say... It might have something to do with... The side of the belt that's being consumed... Over here, but... It should consume from both sides anyway. Uh, equally, actually, so there's no need for a lane balancer there. Is that a bio sludge pickup? I think that's a bio sludge pickup. Beautiful. What's its destination? You're kidding. It's going from here to here. Encoded network ID 2. Oh. I thought I put encoded. Network ID 1 here. Well, it'll be a short trip anyway. Network ID 1. Um, so that shouldn't happen again. The top speed is same, but faster acceleration. What bioculture stacks to? Maybe that's the problem. Bioculture only stacks to five. I don't know how this managed to be seven, to be honest. Um, I think it might even help if we remove the bioculture here. I don't know. It depends on how much... I, I was going to say it depends on how much can go in here, but the amount that can go in here is definitely not much. Because otherwise it wouldn't have stopped at seven. Oh, this one's moving again. I didn't even change anything. So why... This is connected. Read belt contents hold. Genetic data equals zero. Read belt contents hold. Genetic data equals zero. I think uh, we should probably... Read both of those bits of belt there. So basically, this only requires 10, so that right there is more than 10 genetic data. Um, that should prevent it from jamming, I say for the third time. Although, oh, we've run out of blank data cards. Fair enough. Now, I wanted to think about speeding these up. 40 megawatt each. How's that going to impact our power? Okay, I actually expected like a different slither of how much power we're using, but apparently that's actually significant. If I don't buff that one as well, how fast is this? 20 biomass per second? Twenty bioculture per second. Um, we can easily keep up with nutrient fats. 
bioculture itself. We can easily keep up with that as well. Okay. About 12 eggs. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. You're the one I raided a while ago, right? With the cute little weird uh, animated avatar. Indeed. Um, okay, so without blank data cards, it's kind of hard to see how well this is working now. But this can actually only consume 11.2 biomass per second. Oh, but we were trying to consume the bioculture faster as well. Well, it's all moot until blank data cards come back. Which... They are at least somewhat being made. We've already got a train load, actually. This is about to hit 8k. Fantastic. I was wondering if you would be up for an achievement hunt in a few weeks after 1st of April? I need an achievement for 100%. Finish the game in 8 hours? Sure, that sounds fun. I haven't actually done that one myself. So multiplayer counts, I presume, is uh, the implicit part there? Let's go to the mall. I'll get the scaffolding spiders to drop what they can over here as well. Yeah, multiplayer. Uh, we'll need a few people. Okay. I'll let you know. No worries. Seems good to me. It might be a bit late for me, but I can definitely do that occasionally. Uh, I'm just guessing that based on the fact that I gave you a raid. Oh, is that... That's not blank data cards. That's a uh, contaminated scrap pickup. We can at least use this opportunity to confirm that the precise loader is going to work. Uh, we've now got a stack size of 12, so that's not going to line up perfectly. But yeah, I think... I think we could probably get rid of... The divided by 4 here for this part. It's only the stack size that we need to divide by 4. The rest of them can insert all the time. If the stack size drops to 4, they're not going to... Uh, drops to 1, uh, they're not going to over-insert. Okay. I wonder where the blank data cards are going to go first. They are going to uh, mechanical science. Okay. And now we've run out of rough data cards. Oh. Not really. This one's empty. And this one's empty. And we've got lots of rough data cards here. Rough data storage substrates. And we've got quite a few trains that are idle. I don't understand. That does not seem to bode well. Can we maybe bump up the priority on this? I think that was a coincidence. I don't think LTN reacted to that in like two frames. Okay. Uh, we've resupplied with whatever we've got. Why do I have biomass in my inventory? Let's do something about that. Biomass. That comes after experimental... There's a whole lot of cards that I haven't added to the requests. 
I'll just do that as they become relevant. Okay, so what I really want to see is genetic data delivered here so we can see this build working. Um, I could just remove the limit. Well, we've run out of blank data cards here anyway. Uh, I'm going to do it. Priority. Lots. Just until we see all of our science is working. Um, we were also going to... I did say I wasn't going... Oh. Wait, what? Rough data... Storage substrate is not outputting. Why not? Because it's completely full. There is a train coming to pick it up. Okay. Do we have a shortage of trains? We do not. Um... All right. It is possible we should also add another cargo rocket silo uh, to launch data storage substrates because they are just that high throughput. They're getting there anyway. So I think we will add another build for that. Uh, add another copy, that is. We'll do it right next to the scrap build, which happens to be where our construction spiders are. Very convenient. Rail block goes here. Don't need that random space rail. Don't know how it got in there. Probably a copy-paste from this, uh, scrap recycling block. Um, I think that included a copy-paste of the increased priority for these stations, which is what I want. We could also maybe consider removing the big power poles here, but first I need to figure out where the, um, I think here is fine. Where the pylon substation is going to fit. That the lights are still white, uh, I think that means LTN hasn't even looked at them yet. It should be green if it's, like, ready. Yellow if a train is coming to it. Yep, there we go. LTN just found those stations. And they just got delivery sent to them. Fantastic. Seems that if we set the priority high enough... Uh, we're not having too much trouble keeping up with those. Who knows what else in our base is suffering. But it's the orbital science that I care about most for now. Um, I don't think I ever got around to... Putting some power management. Oh, we didn't put the beacons here either, so it doesn't really matter yet. Um, what's the overall throughput in this thing? 
Only 41.2 per second. That's pretty abysmal, actually. Uh, so, once the spiders get back to the mall, I'll send them over there. Uh, we need to power manage this whole thing so that we're not running the wide area beacons, uh, except during the day. Uh, meanwhile, in space. So what have we got for the tier 2? We haven't done biocombustion resistance data. Uh, we've done experimental genetic. We haven't done this one. We haven't done this one. We did this first because... Uh, well, we actually did this block first. Um, because we need to make experimental bioculture before we can make experimental biomass. We need experimental biomass for three of these things. So we might need a block just for that. Ten experimental biocultures make five to ten experimental biomass and zero to five biomass. Interesting. And it also outputs the two usual culprits of contaminated fluids. It's made in a growth facility. Those things are big. Uh, I think this will definitely be in its own block. We'll probably do 12, 24 of them. Or at least we'll lay it out so that we can do 24. Uh, I think here, right next to one of its prerequisites, makes the most sense. Okay. So... Uh, drop-off station goes here and here. Uh, we'll just confirm again. One physical, one fluid. Very, very easy uh, configuration for the stations. I don't know what the throughput rate is going to be, though. So, first of all... Uh, let me just grab this. I just want the wide area beacons and the pylon substation so I can see where they usually fit. Might change it a little bit. Also... Uh, the negative 70% is four speed modules. Okay. Bio uh, growth facility. Recipe, one fluid in, two fluids out, one solid in, two solids out. Uh, so as usual, the fluids are going to be a pain. I wonder if I should copy the pipe layout that we did here. Probably. Not worried about speed module. Actually, uh, it's too late. Inserters. We'll figure out the belts and inserters later. In case anything changes. Okay, so tentatively, uh, that's our blueprint.
we can put it around a wide area beacon like that, but it's not going to touch all of them. Can we also do it here? No. Hmm. Oh, that's... that's wrong. Okay, uh... Let's say we start... here. And this one goes here. It should probably be one tile closer. Even if the symmetry won't be perfect. So that is going to touch eight of them. We're not going to be able to fit 16 in the one block down here. Rotate that around. Pipes. Uh, going to look something like this. I think. See if there aren't any exceptions in the part that I copy pasted. These two don't line up. Why not? Because I made a mess of copying this part, I think. Oh, that's definitely got a beacon in the way. We should just do a pair of these. How fast would this even be? Let's remove that for now. Is this the new update? Uh, this is space exploration. Um, I don't know if you mean has space exploration been updated? Is that it? Or if you mean Vanilla Factorio, because it's not Vanilla Factorio. Okay, so let's just double check. Biochemical, I mean, uh, contaminated cosmic, contaminated biosludge. Cosmic is here, and here, and here. Looks good. Contaminated biosludge goes here, and here. Okay. And then... Well, we're going to need more room up here, I think. Uh, if we go with this, we're looking at 7.8... Call it a bit over 10. Oh, yeah, it'll be 10.4, won't it? Plus 2.6, 10.4 uh, per second, both input and output. That's really manageable. Uh, the fluid is also pretty slow. So we're not going to have any trouble with input and output belts or pipes. Uh, Halo rules. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. en 7 Noah. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Good to see you again. Rule number one of Factorio, you need more space than that. Rule number two, no more space than that. Indeed. I once tried to build a kind of a spaghetti base, but deliberately extra spacious, so that there would be room for all of the little extra things that I have to throw in all the time. It didn't work. <laughs> it, it, it still became you know, a cramped problem. So the only input is nutrient gel. Uh, we can... Why do I not have pumps? Pump. I do have pumps. 
This goes here, that goes there. Copy paste that. Actually, I bet if I copy pasted this, no, nope, it does not snap the way I would want it to. This is so right, indeed. Snake, snake. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'm always amazed of the spaghetti in a speedrun and how it all just works out. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I think I would like to fit more of these, so we'll probably... We'll probably move the beacon up here. Or should I move the... We can't fit 16, right? That's like pretty much impossible. Let's go for 12. Um, I'm just going to remove this part. Everything else is pretty uniform and we can figure it out after the fact. So, copy that. Move it so that it's in... Oh, that's overload. Wait, what? Oh, this goes down here, I think? Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay. And just for symmetry's sake, I think that actually goes up there. Also for the sake of that pipe. Terminated Cosmic. Um, we need a 9. That's actually perfect. This part needs an underground instead. And a 3 is not good enough. Well, I guess we could use a 3 if we want this to connect like so. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. It's actually like fewer pieces of pipe. Um, that one goes there. That's fine. Move this one here so we can use a 3B. That's looking much cleaner, I think. Although, the asymmetry of that part is bothering me a little bit. Not gonna lie. I guess I could just move this here. And then this would have to change, and then... That wouldn't line up. It's fine. That's what we'll tell ourselves. Anyway. Um, so that's 12 of these on each side. I think I can live with that. And it is a little bit lower than the middle. Uh, we're only looking at... 14 experimental bioculture per second. In other words, significantly less than one belt. Each one of these consumes 1.7 per second. Uh, I think we could just do fast inserters here for the output belt. That's nice and easy. Uh, input belt, rather. Let's copy... Paste this on the other side. This just happens to line up here, which I like. Uh, I don't think a 15 is one tile too long, if I have this here. Maybe we should move the whole thing down slightly. We also need this one connected. This is pr probably 
the most sensible place to do that. Therefore, this will just be a 9. And that actually reaches. Perfect. Okay. We'll then have a slow unloader here. And considering the symmetry of this, I think we could just... have these belts go in each direction. Especially with how slow it is, I don't think that's going to cause any problems. This goes back this way. Cosmic water output on one side is broken. And maybe you can th fit 36. Uh, I don't really want to do one down the middle. Um, well, maybe. Hmm. Maybe we could fit 36. I think 24 is going to be overkill, though, already. And this way we can just do one station to each pair. We've got all the space in the universe, so I think that's okay. I'm not as concerned about saving space here. Cosmic water output on one side is broken. Oh, this one? That's a problem. Um, okay, let's check. This one is also broken. This one's also broken. This one's also broken. Okay. How about a 7 here? 7 here. This one will have to be special. Um, 7 here. And this one will have to be special. And so on. I think... Hmm. If we connect all of these like so... I'm gonna have some... trouble with that. At least some of them are going to have to go off to the side. What's this? That's that 3B. We can change this to a fiver. That's a better fit. This one's in a really awkward position for the other pipe. So it's just this one and this one where the beacons are. That's a problem. We can't really move the beacon. Or can we? We actually can. Yeah, that's, uh, that's much better, actually. That doesn't feel right. So normally this goes... Yeah. And 
that goes there. Fantastic. I like that a lot better than the belt spaghetti that I was starting to consider. And it shouldn't be difficult to get um, physical outputs for these, I imagine. Let's see. We'll work backward from here. There's only... Oh, there's two outputs. Um, okay. Underground. That might be a problem. Nope, we're fine. goes here, or symmetry, for justice. Fantastic. And we'll deal with filtering the outputs down here. As for the fluid pipes, I think everything's already good. Uh, I don't want to forget to do this. Actually, can we maybe use some underground pipes like this? Put a 3B here. And get rid of that. That's the wrong way around. Okay. Read belt contents hold at the end of the output. Uh, just to remind ourselves, we're only looking for 15 per second. That's 7.5. A little bit more than 7.5 per second on each half here. Uh, the yellow inserters are probably fast enough. Curious to see if that's the case. And... Next this. To the train stop. What fluid are we needing? Nutrient gel. Threshold. Hundred thousand for the fluid and experimental. What does this stat to five? Uh, so five times forty times four, I think, is a hundred. Uh, Eight hundred, not one hundred. Uh, yep. So we'll just ask for... Well, we've got lots of storage and it's a really sh small stack size. So maybe we should ask for, like, at least four train loads. And as for the fluid... Uh, nutrient gel... 120,000... And that's it. Experimental nutrient gel requester. I think that's it. Let's turn that on. And pipe is already connected. We'll need a couple of... Oh, we don't have the stations there yet. 
We're going to set them as high priority because waste products have to be picked up. And I need to set this filter as well. Experimental bioculture. Fantastic. Okay, so fluid. Fluid. And we're going to do something novel and different. We're going to point the pumps in the correct direction this time. Also, oh. Oh, I copy-pasted it like this, and it excluded the pipes. Fair enough. Alright. Uh, we'll use a standard balanced loader here. There's not going to be any other... Oh, there's two physical outputs, actually. So let's just filter them like this. And it's going to be pretty easy to duplicate this if it comes to it, so I'm not even going to bother with the rest just yet. Uh, so, what's our actual product that we want? Experimental biomass. Do that on this side. Let's see, undergrounds over here. And regular biomass here. Since biomass is sort of a waste product of this one, our goal is experimental biomass. Uh, that is all the more reason this needs to be a high priority pickup. Whereas biomass pickup is just... Oh, I haven't actually turned this combinator on. Uh, let's do that. And send biomass wherever it needs to go. Um, but yeah. We want to pick up the biomass from here before we pick it up from the station where we produce it directly. Oh, this doesn't need to be filter inserters. And we don't need any other fancy circuitry like what we did here. Still waiting on that uh, genetic data. I guess I'm not too surprised. It is flowing down here now, though, so we've caught up with um, biomass. That is excellent. A uh, bio sludge, rather. Nice. Although this display doesn't seem to be working. We've got 11,000. Oh, that says everything. If it said anything, this would be working. Now I have to go through and click every single one of these <laughs> to fix this circuit. Because if I copy paste, it's going to overwrite the constants. Oops. Eventual misclick. So we've finally got an indicator of just how much uh, bio sludge we've got here. Alright, are we just about there? Two to go. Pretty sure that's all of them. Fantastic. The ones showing a green light are definitely uh, working. 
Okay. So that is our last storage tank of bio sludge, mostly full. Very nice. Uh, we're only lacking blank data cards here now. We've got 6.4k genetic data. Um, that's suboptimal. Um, I do want to prioritize this one. Just so that we can see it working. How is our... Oh, that's right. We were working on rough data storage substrates downstairs. We finished the build and it is working just fine. Fantastic. Are we having any trouble moving uh, the rough data storage substrates? This chest is going to get... Yeah, these chests are going to get full, but there is a train coming to pick them up. So that seems fine, I suppose. Uh, it remains to be seen if we're actually bottlenecking on... Oh, we're definitely bottlenecking on this. Because these uh, cargo rocket silo builds are bottlenecked on 90 per second uh, by the belts. And we're currently looking for... Let's see... One of these blocks consumes a little bit over 90 per second. Uh, so we actually need two more cargo rocket silos launching rough data storage substrates to keep up with that. Which is a little bit of a shock, but I guess it's fine. Um, why don't we copy the stations? It'll be a little bit easier. Copy this. Over here and here. It's only asking for 32k. That's fine, I suppose. Actually, no. It Oh, 32k is more than more than can fit in a cargo rocket silo. So I guess there's no problem there. Uh, can I simply copy the settings from this one? And not that one. Copy paste these two. So rough data storage substrates. Nervous Orbit RDSS. Launch on cargo full. Fantastic. We just more than doubled our RDSS coming to orbit by just copy pasting a couple of things. Alright, so as long as iron holds up, um that should dramatically increase the overall flow of blank data cards. Oh, there's no speed modules in this. Uh, that would help. Now let's check the rate again, I suppose. 20.4 uh, experimental bioculture per second. That is not a problem. It is enough that it's approaching uh, having a problem whereby half a belt isn't enough, but we could easily fix that if we had to. Do you have enough production to satisfy those rockets? Yes, yes we do. Um, we're actually completely saturated on... Uh, cargo rocket section. There's probably a bunch of them here as well. Yeah, there's at least 48. Uh, what's the condition on this one? If there's more than 160 cargo rocket sections here, we pack them. The packed ones get sent back to Nalvis. Um, once this is full, 
We've got cargo rocket sections here being sent up from Nalvis. We've got space capsules here getting sent up from Nalvis. We've got space capsule production is full. Although I see a lack of certain resource on this belt. Which is surprising. It's very surprising that this is backed up, but where we've run out of LDS. Uh, and cargo rocket sections, uh, the area that we produce them themselves, we've had to set that to a low priority because we have to consume the recycled ones first, but that's completely backed up as well. I mean the RDSS. Uh, you're also only unloading onto one side of the belt. Is that enough? Uh, yeah, I think it's probably fine. Uh, each side only needs 20. 22.5 would be the limit. Um, I'm, oh, it's actually 10.2 on each side. 20.4 is what we're doing. So we're still well within reason here. Um, I think that is just about this build finished. Uh, this is already on. Okay. Experimental biomass and which fluid is this going to be? This one lines up perfectly, so that's definitely, um, definitely going to have to be uh, contaminated by a sludge. And we'll put... Uh, contaminated cosmic water over here somewhere. Just a 3B. That's a pretty good fit. Fantastic. Alright, so this is... Experimental biomass and also contaminated by sludge. And this one is regular biomass and contaminated cosmic water. Oops. Fantastic. Uh, I need to set this to uh, experimental biomass. And this one. Regular biomass. It's so hard to tell if they've all been updated. Why does experimental biomass request have 40 train loads requested? Wait, what? Experimental biomass. We don't actually have... Oh, I see what you mean. Um... This is the provide stack threshold, uh, which is 160, which is one long train. Is that what you were referring to? And this is 100k? Uh, Talem Grandmaster? The reason for this is the defaults that I've set. Um, 
Provide stack threshold. Uh, I've set the default to a million. And provide threshold. I've set the default to one million. Same goes for request thresholds. So what this accomplishes is we never get a train accidentally scheduled to come and pick something up at like a drop-off station where I accidentally gave it a positive signal for some resource or something like that. Upper station has 32k request. Okay. 32k. That might be a bit much. Let's double check this. Uh, item stack size is 5, and I wanted like or I think I accidentally put an extra zero or something. Five times forty uh times four is eight hundred for one train. Times four is three thousand two hundred. It's definitely one extra zero. Good catch, thank you. Um okay. I'm surprised we haven't had nutrient gel delivered here yet. Um, it's it's because I never did a nutrient gel pickup station. No, uh, this is here. Oh, this is why. Provide stack threshold. I shouldn't have removed that. Um, let's put that back. Threshold. 160, and regular provide threshold, which is effectively only for fluids, because there's never 100k of a solid item. Um, we should see nutrient gel delivered quite soon. Once LTN feels like having a look at it. I thought there was something here that I forgot. Oh, it was Vitamelange Spice. That was the station that... Like the one input or output that I forgot about and we were running out of space here. Yeah, this is quite a complicated uh, rail block. Um... If I was going to do it all again, I would break it up into separate things. But we got there, and it does save. Um, uh, it does save. What was I trying to say? It does save some train logistics. Trains don't have to go back and forth doing some of these things. Alright, so we're definitely bottlenecked on the output belt. I'm satisfied with that. Biomass, uh, bio sludge rather, is looking nice and full everywhere. I wonder if we should get rid of this pump actually. Because, where are you getting bio sludge from? Oh, no. Yep, that completely refuted what I was thinking for a second there. Um, we want bio sludge to come back here when it's been treated from uh, this facility, for example. So we'll keep that empty. That is actually a reason that we should limit the amount of bio sludge in this particular not not here but the rest of uh, the storage over this way but on the other hand we do have a one-way pump here and this will effectively get consumed as a priority so this will all get pumped into these tanks. This will get full. This will stop. Um, 
Yeah. We'll just turn this off when we've got more than 24k in this tank. And that'll effectively prioritize consuming the bio sludge that gets dropped off here. It probably wouldn't hurt to add some more storage. I don't know how often we're going to have deliveries from uh, scrap decontamination. But either way, we can just put more storage here or more storage down here. Um, probably here would make more sense. We'll see. Okay, so how close are we to getting any of this done? Uh, we're just waiting on experimental genetic data still. We're still waiting on... Oh, we do have genetic data here. This one's working, so why aren't... Products finished. Oh, they've all finished quite a lot of products. We're just bottlenecking on... There's no biomass here. That's the only problem at the moment. Okay. Biomass pickup station is not set up properly. Also, I forgot to put the wiring here as well. That would definitely be a help. Let's connect this here. So as soon as LTN looks, there's going to be a delivery picking up either biomass or uh, nutrient gel. We can definitely bump up the train limit on this one because one is a stack size of five and the other is fluid. Both of the... Both of these are going to load onto the train incredibly quickly. So, there should be two trains, if not more, scheduled to come here as soon as LTN takes a pass at it. Nice. And... And end. That gives us our experimental genetic data. Very, very nice. I think most of the time it's just going to be this machine active. Um, let's see. 16.3 biochemical data per second. And this can consume slightly more than that. That would be enough to make all four machines active, actually. So it's only when we're running out that it's only going to be this one active. Okay, cool. There's our biomass being delivered. And... Nutrient gel shouldn't be far behind. Is this it? Yes, yes it is. And another biomass, and another biomass. Okay, cool. I guess that shouldn't be surprising. There's 7.2 train loads of biomass here. Six swings of the inserters is all it takes to load that train. Alright, so what should we build next? Uh, this is experimental biomass, which means... We can finally move on to the other three data cards for the tier 2 biosides. Um, which one would be easiest? Probably biocombustion resistance data. Thermodynamics facility, one fluid in, one fluid out, and we recycle some 50% of the biomass. 
We can do a copy-paste job to accomplish this one. Um, biochemical resistance data is going to be a pain. There's two fluid outputs from biochemical facilities. Not to mention... Uh, also recycling the biomass. Also junk cards. Not looking forward to that one. That's going to be a bit of a headache. Uh, biomechanical resistance is two physical in, two physical out, with some recycling of experimental biomass. So effectively one physical out, almost. One fluid in, two fluids out is also a nuisance. Alright, so let's do biocombustion data first. Am I in the spider? I don't think so. Let's head down this way, and we'll copy our usual layout for thermodynamic facilities. We're not going to have, like, gigantic scrap output like with this one, so that's fine. Okay, that goes there. Make sure you turn the... Constant combinators off, so we won't get any drop-offs here. These are all pickup. Good. So we're going to be doing biocombustion. We already did uh, biocombustion resistance. We already did biocombustion. Copy, paste. So we've got an input of plasma stream. Output is contaminated bio sludge. It is already connected to this. Um, we're not going to be doing a dual output here. That'll change a little bit. Um, we just need to bring the experimental biomass back to where it started. Experimental biomass and blank data card. I'm thinking we could Swap the side that the blank data cards are on. And make this experimental biomass. Oops. EX biomass. Copy this across. It'll be the other way around on this side. And we'll... What is this? Oh, that's... That's fine. Uh, probably time I sent the scaffolding spiders back to the mall which is getting further and further away. So instead of um, contaminated scrap, it's going to be experimental biomass. Except we're not going to need nearly so many belts for this. At least that is what I expect. If we multiply this by four, we get net consumption of, well, we, we, we spit out 10.88 experimental biomass per second, L considerably less than half a belt. Um, 
less than half a belt of biocombustion resistance data, less than half a belt of blank data card input. That looks weird. I, I do wish the module inserting would be consistent with which modules go where. Fluid is also nice and slow. So I think we can get rid of... Well, for one thing, we can get rid of this physical station here entirely. And just one belt um, for each resource in each direction is going to be sufficient. Just put those there so we know where they are. Um, this part is fine. This part... Not so much. I think we'll just copy this bit. That's not quite right. If we move this over one tile, we can sneak this belt in here. And then Monon Robust. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Or maybe that should just look more like this. No, it does have to go here, I think. Should probably do it like this, actually. I think that looks better. Alright, so bio goes here. Uh, do we need those? Yeah, we do. Some of these pipes are missing. For when we upgrade this. Let's move the spiders so we can see a little bit better. of these should look like this, I think. Oh, there's no output pipes for these ones either. Those two are already connected. That goes here. Yes. Don't know why these belts are here. Cool. Uh, we could probably connect all of those up this side as well. Does that reach? Yeah, it does. Okay. Uh, this isn't the same distance apart, is it? No. Just do that like so. Perfect. There should be... Yeah, there's nothing but bio on that belt. That's not going to be 
she's so elegant looking. Should be okay. Oh, this part looks wrong. There we go. Don't need that pipe. Don't need that pipe. And... This part's going to be a bit different. better. I don't think we need all of this here, do we? Let's just add it and then remove the excess. Okay, so we don't need that part. We do need this. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I'm not bringing this all together to output to a train stop or something. Uh, I actually want it to go back up the middle. So, we'll remove this. We'll go here. Not quite figure out the shape of that part. That seems good enough. Actually, we do because we need the uh, biocombustion resistance data to get where it needs to go. So that doesn't go there. That just goes there. This doesn't exist. Uh, this also does not exist. I don't know why it didn't occur to me before to just shape this like so. It's a bit cleaner, I think. Um, we can actually just pass everything through that way. I can live with that. Okay, so everything merges here. Um, biomass goes this way. So this goes here, this goes here, they all merge, they all merge, and they get filtered here. That doesn't need a splitter or anything. That just goes there, which I think actually is going to make this fit together better. Yeah, that's kind of perfect, actually. And 
this part. It's going to be just short enough to look really wrong. I think we'll just not bother with an underground for this part. Or maybe here, I guess. Okay. So it's going to be... That's just going to be the one belt. But I think we'll send it to both sides. Perfect. So our recycled... Let's just check. Uh, this one. And this one. And this one all merge. And they merge with this one as well. Uh, experimental biomass comes back this way. And goes back to... Uh, this bit of belt right here. If there's any experimental biomass detected on any of these bits of belt, but especially this one, none of these inserters are going to output experimental biomass. Uh, there's quite a bit of space on the belt as well. I think that's going to be all it takes. Have you considered going back to your old bases and undergrounding everything to save on UPS? I don't know how much difference undergrounding makes to UPS, but uh, certainly some things, like, um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, making a new Omni Smelter block that uses bots, for example, um, and is going to be higher density with far, far, far fewer, well, it's going to have zero belts. Um, but we could do a whole lot more in a whole lot less space with um, bot omni smelting. I think when I did a bot based omni smelter build just for the novelty of it, just to see what it would be like uh, in a previous playthrough, we actually fit slightly more than double the amount of furnaces in the same space. But that was without considering the fact that um, I'm really happy to see this flowing, by the way. Uh, that was without considering the fact that the current Omni Smelter design, there is a lot, like more than usual, there's a lot of space that goes to belts. Also, to train drop-offs for that matter, um, if we're using a We'd probably want to use more than one or two or three or maybe four. Um, but if we're using active provider chest drop-offs, um, and we just have bots and lots of storage and stuff, um, we can have much, much higher density um, in the block in that way as well. We could also have furnaces... Uh, that don't just do the big five resources. Uh, we could also have them doing... The, what is this? Rocket fragment. There was a crash. And the crash was out of range of... These roboports uh, to pick this stuff up. Okay. Is this furnace actually damaged, or is it something like... Oh, it's this cargo rocket thing right here. So... I think... Maybe for a future build... Of these, uh... Cargo landing pads, I should put them all in the middle. Because we've had a few instances of crashed rockets where... Um, where the crashed items have been too far for the robot network to pick up. Are bots less UPS intensive than belts? I believe so, yeah. Sh uh, sheep say meh? 
welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, let's get our deconstruction spiders. Oh, you're kidding. Uh, I can't move it. Alright, fine. Let's... Let's remove this temporarily. Move this guy. Undo that. And just get them to visit where the crashed parts are. What was I trying to... Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of space as well needed for belts with a build like this. And we're also not doing, like, ingot smelting in this space as well, because we had to... I mean, so far for the ingots, we've been doing them in the same block where we do this stuff. But... Uh, the reason that we didn't include ingots in the Omni Smelter design in the first place was actually we can only get so much stuff here by belt. It was difficult enough getting six different resources belted to the furnaces at a decent rate. You reckon the orbital defenses work for cargo rockets? <laughs> Maybe that's what happened. Okay, uh, so let's have a look at, now, not Nervous, uh, Orbit. And let's get that last bit of rail built as well. So everything merges here. We'll just confirm again the amount of stuff output uh, is 30, is like 32, 33 per second. So that's never going to be a problem. Uh, all of the biomass goes back this way and is delivered to this bit of belt right here, which we're not going to output experimental biomass unless there's no experimental biomass right here. That should be all that takes. Um, and then it's just basically... Effectively, two solid, one fluid in, one solid, one fluid out. We've already got the fluid out set up. So I think it's time to switch this thing on. Uh, we don't need the fancy schmancy size unloader. Also, this can be an H. Get to connect. I guess we could have the fluid here as well and save the, on a single train stop. What's the total output of waste fluid here? Only 152 per second if the entire block is active. Okay, let's put this over here. It's going to look a bit cleaner. And I'll just double check all of these are connected. Yes, they are. Fantastic. Uh, that's an input. We don't want to mess with that. Okay, so this is going to be um, provide stack threshold 200, that can be 160, fluid is 100k, station name is, what is this called again? Biocombustion resistance data. Biocombustion resistance data. And also contaminated biosludge. Set it 
as high priority. Uh, I kind of want the station color now. Oh, wait. If I copy everything. 1550, 155. There we go. Cool. I think we're ready. Let's, uh, let's actually set these requests properly. So we're looking for Plasma Street. And blank data cards, yes. Uh, this is two train loads. Experimental biomass only stacks to five, so we'll go for like two and a half train loads. So that's eight, 16, uh, 2,000, right? That's 2K. Free from a nap and lurk. Uh, take care. Have a good nap. Thanks for hanging out. Sidney Hansen von Eisty. You reckon the orbital defense... Oh, that's right. That was said already. I'm doing that less. That's good. Less often. Alright, copy-paste that here. Uh, station name. Let's turn this off for a second. Uh, experimental, blank, and plasma. Experimental... What? What happened? Experimental... Blank, and plasma. Copy, paste the station settings. Turn on the constant combinators. Make sure this is all connected. Make sure we've got our mirrored uh, experimental biomass slash blank data card unloaders because that is important for the recycling. Double check all of these. Copy paste that across. No, no, not that I want to take a nap, I just took one. How was your nap? Um, and then I would like some trains to deliver some things here so that we can see if this is working. Also, we don't need this belt. Fantastic. Uh, so what was this called again? Biocombustion resistance. Res resistance? Biocombustion resistance data. And I think that just leaves two of the uh, data cards that we need to do for the tier two bioscience. And that is to say the most annoying ones. Both of them do two waste fluid outputs. Uh, this one also recycles experimental biomass and spits out junk data card. It's also got three physical inputs, one fluid input, three physical outputs, two fluid outputs, and vitalic acid I don't know how to make yet. So that one is probably going to be the more difficult uh, to get done. Biomechanical resistance data is just experimental biomass, biomechanical, and lubricant. So far, so easy. Uh, recycles experimental biomass, and the only thing that's a nuisance about this actually is the two fluid outputs. So I think we'll do that first, although we are sort of running out of time for today. 
Uh, should I build it over here? Perhaps. Biomechanical data, that's from here. So yeah, let's let's put that nice and close by. Experimental biomass comes from here. I think if I build it in this block, we're going to get the shortest combined trips. How do you get lubricant into orbit? You can do it in barrels, but other than that, you can't do it directly, as far as I know. Um, all of our... Where am I looking? All of our fluids in orbit are made from uh, coal liquefaction. We send up ice and coal because it's much more cargo efficient. Uh, melt the ice, obviously that's not difficult. Coal liquefaction, you're going to need like a barrel of heavy oil to get it started. I think there's a bunch of barrels of heavy oil among other things. Uh, included in the care package when you first find the uh, satellite up in space. So that part's not too much of a hassle. Um, but yeah, that's the way we've been doing it anyway. Let's get some stations here. And then... Oh, I forgot I was in the spider. Let's revise. We need just two inputs for this one, I think. Oh, two physical inputs plus lubricant. Okay. So we're going to do something very much like this. Experimental biomass and biomechanical data. I think we'll keep the biomass on the same side here. We'll probably end up doing the same loop with belts. Uh, so this will be biomechanical data. Biomechanical data. Uh, let's just copy this whole thing. And this will be requesting biomechanical experimental biomass and a lubricant. Not the barreled kind. And I'll set this up now. Biomechanical Two train loads. Oh, hang on. I want to set the request threshold for fluid. I also want to double check that I did that up here. Yeah, it was already set. Maybe I should make including the 100k re request threshold part of the default. Um, Blueprint. Okay. Biomechanical data. Two train loads. 2000 biomass. Oops. And lubricant. Hundred and twenty K. 120k seems to have been serving us pretty well for keeping the trains from trying to overfill it. Uh, but we did see cosmic water run out here earlier. I don't know if that was a... It doesn't look like it would have been a supply issue. It could have been a delivery issue. Um, so maybe I should bump that up at some point. Also, look at this beautiful loop 
functioning. We're down to 5k bio, uh, bio sludge here. But the whole thing does seem to be working just fine. And we... Well, because we're low on bio sludge, we're not exporting um, genetic data just yet. Maybe I should have a block specifically for bio-sludge. Biomass and cosmic water, those are both in the rail network. And we've obviously got what we need to deal with. Contaminated scrap and make bio-sludge where it needs to go. So I think it would probably make the most sense to put that block right here. Let's get our scaffolding spiders over there. And we're running out of time, so I'll put a icon here to show exactly what this block is for. So everything except for cosmic water and contaminated scrap is going to be very close by. Cosmic water itself. I, I should maybe think about making some blocks for fluids as well. Instead of just relying on the old main bus. But... Okay, chemical gel is struggling to catch up right now. Uh, but other than that, it seems to have been doing quite well. Um, I should also put an icon here before we forget. I mean, we'd be able to figure it out from the inputs, but... It's biomechanical resistance data that we're trying to make here, right? Biomechanical resistance data. Biomass, biomechanical data, loop it. Okay, good. And which uh, mechanical facility? It's going to be the layout where we have to have them two tiles apart, isn't it? Where have I done that recently? Here we go. I wonder if I can copy this layout. One fluid in, two out. Uh, two solids in, one solid out. This is going to be effectively the same, except we have to loop the biomass. Yeah, I think we can just copy this for starters. I'll bring this over here so we can copy that back immediately. And I think this layout is probably going to serve us very well uh, for this build. Let's turn off those combinators real quick. Make sure there's no other sneaky drop-offs. Oh, this is a drop-off. Wait, what? No, this is a... Was this set up wrong? It is. These are supposed to be facing this way. And these are supposed to be facing this way. How many times am I going to put pumps facing the wrong direction? Okay. So let's just set the recipe before we go. Biomechanical resistance data. The only thing I'm concerned about is... I don't think I'm concerned about it anymore. As long as the throughput isn't too high, 
uh, we should be able to simply use filter inserters to pick up the final product here. And biomass, experimental biomass that's being looped is going to continue back this way. And we can have it come up here. There's no room in the middle. That's not going to happen. Mucky, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How's your stream today, Mucky? Silent Storm, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Well, I was just about to finish, but clearly I have to keep going for at least another hour, right? Um, we'll see. I think that's the rules, sorry, indeed. Uh, Humber, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let me just confirm that I got all of those recipe changes. That looks about right. So we've got our contaminated bio sludge output here, contaminated cosmic water output here, lubricant. Uh, we need to change this. Oh. This also uses lubricant as an input, um, but we do need to change this station. And yeah, the only question, oh, I, I lost the station name details. Rip. I vaguely remember something like that, yes. I was going to say two, but I'll let it slide. <laughs> no worries. Uh, not again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Fat boy, not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. I need to stay awake for the Formula One in two hours. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Uh, so. Experimental biomass... is this one. We also need mech data and lubricant. And we need to update these as well. Uh, experimental biomass 2000 uh, 16k mechanical data Biomechanical data. And lubricant stays the same. Fantastic. Now the only question is... Is the throughput going to be low enough? That... Oh yeah, that's beautiful. So ignoring the negative here. 21.76 plus 5.44... Uh, we should be able to simply squeeze our biomass back this way after it goes past what will be filter inserters. I'll just do a straight belt there. Set this to... What are we doing here again? Biomechanical resistance data. Resistance. Biochemical, biomechanical resistance data. Okay. Uh, we're not going to set filters. We're just going to enable, disable... Uh, everything less than or equal to zero. Hold on. Everything less than... Okay, yeah, that's an input signal. The green signal from here. That's fine. And the filter that we are going to use is... Bio... 
mechanical resistance data. Fantastic. Uh, I should probably also put a little circuit here so that the desired output can never go past this block, uh, this tile. Biomechanical resistance data. Equals zero. And read this tile. That should be fine. I think we're actually ready. That was by far one of the shortest builds um, that we've done. But that's what happens when you end up with some useful layouts that you're able to copy and paste. Okay, let's turn on our stations then. And wonder how long it's going to take before... Oh, this one's set up wrong still. And we also haven't finished the loop here, but that's probably fine. Um, actually, let me make sure. So... It's going to be on this side. The experimental biomass. This is going to go here. Ideally, I would like to do what we did in this block, where it comes back around this side, especially since it goes through all of this. But I don't think that's going to be possible. Also, with the throughput, I don't think this is going to be a problem. We can probably... Probably, probably... Get away with just putting it back there. So this will only be experimental biomass that comes through here. And experimental biomass is on... That's the wrong side. Okay, so we need to swap these around. There's already a train coming. It's lubricant. It's fine. I'm surprised it came in such short order when I turned this off. Okay, so this is going to go here. This is going to go here. We'll double check the enabled conditions. Seems good. Oh, and I just realized we actually can now do it this way. So we don't even need to add another bit of circuit wire to this bit of the belt. That should be all it takes. Um, we can do the same thing at this input. For now, I just want to turn this side on. And I wonder if we've already got biomechanical data or experimental biomass available. Products finished, zero. That would be a no. Uh, biomechanical data we've probably got. We do. 7.9k, fantastic. So why don't we yet have experimental genetic data? We definitely made some of that already. Also, uh, that's an 8 to 8, so I don't care which station it drops it off to. Experimental, genetic. We've got 22k here. What's... Oh. Accidentally removed the threshold. Provide stack threshold. 160. 
Should be the same as this one. Well, that's good to know. I was afraid that we weren't producing enough experimental data. Cool. Uh, we should see a delivery of this quite soon. But for the moment... What was the other thing? Um, yeah, that's all of our prerequisites for the new block sorted out. Alright, so we've done... Uh, let's see. We've done the first four. We've done biocombustion. We've done biomechanical resistance. We've done bio... We haven't done biochemical resistance, and we have done experimental genetic data. So, final boss of Bioscience 2. Uh, first we need Vitalic Acid, which I have no idea how to make. It is Glass, Vitamelange, and Sulfuric Acid. Easy enough. How many things does this go into? Should we create it locally, or should we put it in a rail block? It goes into nine things. I think we know the answer. Oh wait, this is... Hold on. Vitalic Acid... Is our input, yes. So, there's one way to make it, and nine ways to use it. Oh, it makes bio sludge. So it's made from extract, glass, and sulfuric acid. It only makes ten bio sludge with nuggets and cosmic water. It's probably quite tricky to compare all of the ways to make bio sludge and see what's best. Um, I just got a feeling I want to check on the military spiders real quick. They're fine. Okay. Back to focusing on FNEI. Bio scrubbers. Bloat burst ammo. Unit capsule. Pheromone dart. Naquium powder? Oh, that's an input. Oh, no, that is one of their... That is the main result, actually. Naquium processing. Vitalic epoxy. Okay, so suffice to say, Vitalic acid is going to go into a lot of things. We're definitely going to need to put that into the rail network. I think we'll put it up here with our other prerequisites. And... Uh, scaffolding spiders should probably have enough to get that done. I don't think we've had any train deliveries here yet, except for lubricant. There should have been biochemical, biomechanical data by now. Uh, there's only 104 here. I think it went somewhere else. What are we waiting on? More of this. Just biomass, which is already on the way. Fantastic. Is this the biomass train? Yep. Doesn't take long to load. I wonder if... Yeah, it's fine. Night all. Take care, monkey. Thanks for the raid. Have a good sleep. Alright, let's head over to this block.
experimental genetic data is on the scene. Where is it going? Oh, it's going to our new purple vats. Fantastic. We haven't made any products here yet, so this is it. Also, I don't know how that inserter escaped notice. That bit of lurch is because we're placing uh, signals. Once the rail network gets big enough, the computer has to have a bit of a think about it. Although I do wish it would spread that think around a little bit more. And just consider these inaccessible until it figures it out. Um, anyway. What were we doing here? Acid. Of the metallic variety. Glass, extract, and sulfuric acid. It's pretty straightforward. What type of machine do we need? Acid, acid, acid. Uh, space manufacturing. Been a little while since we used those. Okay, so this is going to be a. F it's not going to be a very familiar shape. Whatever we do here, but we will go with more than likely the usual layout. Put two solids and one fluid. Space manufacturing uh, is here. And beacon, negative 70% power consumption. How is our power? Oh, wow. Uh, we, earlier today, with this much power, we were consuming just a tiny slither of it. That's actually really alarming. Uh, I think it's time to expand our solar panel. Uh, layout over here. So let's grab some of that. Just line it up here. Snap to grid relative goes brr. And we'll leave the bots to it until it's time to do that again. You can make those on land if you want the prod bonus. Ah, that's a good point. Hold on, what do we actually need? Acid. Glass, vitamelange extract, and sulfuric acid. We have all of that in the rail network downstairs. Okay. It's definitely time to do another build down here then. I think we'll do it over here somewhere, close to uh, these vacant cargo rockets. And also relatively close to the Vita Melange extract. Relatively close to glass. And sulfuric acid, I guess, comes from here and here. Let's grab our construction spiders. Um, this place seems fine. I do want to place the big power poles here eventually, but for now, just do this for the substation pylons. Okay, so I guess we're not doing this build on uh, in space. I'll just leave that stuff there for now. Wouldn't be surprised if I ended up using it. I'll just leave it blank so that I know it wasn't necessarily intended for anything specific. And also, I just realized 
in one of our builds, there's probably a bit of redundant pipe. Looks like it must have got it. Nope, this is it right here. Be gone. And on this side, it's fine. Okay. So what else do we need? Let's just assume we have the Vitalic Acid. Um, three physical inputs, one fluid. Does it matter where I put this? Well, it doesn't matter that much, but... We'll keep it close to experimental biomass, I guess. Yeah, this will be fine. Three solids, one fluid input. Two fluids output. Biochemical facility. That is the least fun. Um, we do have this layout for that. Thank you for the follow, Yaman. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So that's three solids, fluid in, two fluids out, one solid out. It's the same except that we also have to deal with looping and looping the experimental biomass and junk data cards. So I think we'll copy we'll copy all of this to start with. Change some recipes around and see what we end up doing differently. is not supposed to be there. That's an easy fix. Is that missing an inserter? Down here? Uh, no, it was because of the beacon. Alright, let's just copy-paste that again. There we go. Oh, these are not my construction spiders. That's why they're not building anything. Uh, remove that pipe, please. Fantastic. Scaffolding spiders. But actually, see what they've got left. Get them to start filling out this block. Biochemical resistance data. Okay, so that is not rotated the same way it was before. Or is it? Uh, yeah, it is actually. We're doing the input fluid on the middle. In the middle. Metallic acid... Uh, what's the rate for the physical items? Can we use this station? Well, we're definitely going to have to change this part, actually. Okay. Physical item inputs are 16, 16, and 16 per second. Less than half a belt for each. I think we can probably manage that. Although, uh, with this belt layout... Yeah, we can do four different... We've already got it set up for three. Um... We could do four different items here if we want. So it's exactly the same rate for each physical item. Acid stacks to 50, 
kind of expected that. Uh, so we'll do two of them for biomass. It's going to be it's going to be the exact same layout because the stack size for experimental biomass is so small. Um, we're going to have that going into two chests, and it can use its own belt. We still need blank data cards, and we'll make this one vitalic acid. Fantastic. Uh, Femni, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good morning. Alright, so we're going to copy-paste this across. Right after I change that. Metallic acid, blank data card, experimental biomass, and experimental biomass. Fantastic. So that's just to make sure they all unload at the same speed. We read the hand contents of all the inserters and also these bits of belt. And we don't drop off more of a resource until that's empty. Well, I thought this build was going to be really difficult, but actually uh, we've sort of already done it. And unlike with uh, biochemical data, we're not going to be cramming in experimental genetic data down here as well. So that should be pretty straightforward. Let's do our fluid uh, drop-offs. It's only going to be the one physical... Oh no, it's two physical outputs. Okay. Uh, let's do that. Well, first of all, let's put the stations down so that we can see where everything lines up. They're going to need to be priority pickups. As is always the case, um, because we've got junk stuff to get rid of. It's hard to think of how many stations we've got that do not have priority pickups uh, up here. Since we're combining stations and doing the fluid pickup in the same spot. Let's put our chests here. Stack inserters. And whichever lines up best. This will be contaminated bio sludge. And this one will be contaminated cosmic water. Are they all connected this time? Contaminated cosmic water goes here. Fantastic. Uh, this will look a little bit different, I think it to what I did over here. I actually connected this one down here because it was sort of convenient. I think this will be easier though. Because this goes here and this goes here. Although, I want to leave room to double this. It'll be, it'll be easy to change the pipes around, though. Okay. Uh, so we have... We need to loop the uh, experimental biomass. I think we're going to swap these around, and just for the sake of, well no, not just for the sake of anything, uh, we need to copy this across here actually, because 
This belt merges with this, merges with this, and so on. And this will allow us to uh, loop our contaminated, sorry, not contaminated. What is this thing? Oh, that's the station from the other build. Uh, this doesn't have to connect over here because it's already going this way. Fantastic. So experimental biomass is going back up here. I feel like making this look the same. It'll look a bit cleaner. And from here, just go up like that. So that's effectively going to be a priority uh, belt for the experimental biomass. Because this is not going to output experimental bio, uh, biomass if there's any ex experimental biomass detected here on the belt. Same goes for all of these. So that part was pretty easy. We'll bring this down here. And I don't want to move that down one tunnel. And this will be our desired output. Biochemical resistance data. Goes here. And junk data cards go here. Fantastic. Uh, contaminated cosmic water, you say? That's actually correct. But also junk. High priority. Thresholds. Fantastic. Oh, uh, we're not going to be using this topsy-turvy wiring color, though. Let's get rid of that. I'll just delete this. It'll be easier. I didn't mean to delete the stack inserters, though, I don't think. Green wire connects to the station. And to here. I think I prefer just changing the... Um, Arithmetic Combinator, when this situation arises, whereby each would confuse the fast inserters. If they are still set to everything. Okay. I think that is getting close to finished. That's already set up. This is going to be contaminated biosludge and biochemical resistance data. And yeah, I think it's time to configure the uh, configure the train stop. And summon some items. Let's set the station name first. Bio less experimental. Uh, blank data card. And acid. Metallic acid. We also need some kind of fluid. Uh, it's gel. Chemical gel. 
All right. Now we just need to set the um, signals to request those things. Request threshold 100,000. That's for the fluid. Request stack threshold 160. We're going to look for 2,000 biomass. Wait, that might be wrong. Uh, we've only got two chests per cargo wagon. Uh, 800 is a full train load, I think. Yep. So multiply that by two, gives us 1,600. 2,000 is probably going to go over the line. We'll request 1,200. That is a train load and a half. Even with the way it sometimes over delivers, uh, that should avoid overfilling this thing. And we also need blank data card, slightly more than one train load, just enough to make it deliver before it runs out. And metallic acid has the same stack size. And I think we're done. Should be a train coming to deliver at least one of these things uh, relatively soon. And I guess we're just gonna move on to do whatever's next while we wait for that to happen. Let's go back to the mall, and let's get our scaffolding spiders to continue expanding the base. Solar panels should be... oh. I was going to say solar panels should be ready to place over here, but uh, it is taking the bots a while. How many bots do we have here? Uh, only 340. I do have it set up to request only 50 construction. But request stack threshold is one. We're requesting 50 construction bots. And we're reporting available construction bots. So that's only going to deliver 50 bots um, when and if there's no construction bots available. I think we could stand to bump this up a bit. Also, we have construction bots in... Oh. Uh, okay, that's a little bit of a problem. We don't have any request chests here or anything. Uh, what I forgot to do... Is set up something to insert bots into the roboports. The ones that end up in... I should have done a... I probably should have done a blacklist of construction bots and stuff on this inserter. Anyway, we can sort that out relatively easily. Let's bring our spiders over here. And we're just gonna say... I think I've already got this blueprint here somewhere. Well, not blueprint, but like copy-paste. I'll do it here, and then we'll copy... Whoops. I didn't mean to do that. Um, I'll do it here where we can see what we're doing. And we'll copy-paste it over there, so by the time the spiders get there, it'll be done. Robots. And robots. Uh, connect this to here. Read robot statistics. Available construction bots as construction bot. 
available logistic bots as logistic bot and set filters blacklist request from buffer chests that's all it takes and we got that done before the spiders got there fantastic Maybe it would have been easier if I just flew over there myself. No, then I couldn't have done it while the spiders were in motion. I guess I could have lined it up and drifted over there. I like how the spiders look kind of weird when they're creeping across a narrow ledge. Alright, there's our bots sorted out. Back to the mall. And all of a sudden we have a significantly higher number of construction bots. In fact, we probably didn't even need to change uh, this thing here. Although I will leave it where it is. We'll try and keep it so that there's a couple of hundred construction bots available before we stop uh, sending them. Otherwise we'll only be delivering a few bots at a time. It's also going to take that short train a while to deliver all of that scaffolding. Okay. What should we do next? I want to see if that build is working, um, but it's going to be a little while before we receive some of these deliveries. Same goes for a couple of the other builds that we've done recently. Experimental biomass depends on experimental biocultures, which we haven't actually made any yet. Experimental genetic data is all that's missing here. We are requesting 16k. That is switched on. It is connected. Oh, we've got it. Uh, I, I think I found the problem. Oh. Oh. Oh no. I just realized what I've done here. <laughs> Alright, we can fix this. It's fine. Even distribution will be very helpful. Um, putting these items back in the chests that they're supposed to be in. Uh, but yeah, if I was going to do a shared uh, drop-off here, it's not three and three. It's uh, one and one over and over again. So this should go here. And then this goes here, this goes here. And same thing on this side, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Well, that's good to know. We're not suffering from throughput issues that much. That was a well-deserved bonk, I think. Alright. Let's see what we can do. Um, luckily, the chests aren't that full either. It would be... Oh, we only have to take these ones. Yeah, just the ones that don't match. Uh, 
Uh, I think, actually, oh, god damn it. I think what I might do temporarily is change even distribution settings. Uh, so that we've got several seconds before it triggers. Distribute items. Do we... Distribution delay, here it is. Five seconds. That's not the most advanced setting I've ever heard of, and there's only, like, two settings here. Oh, you can... You can add ignored buildings to a list. That's interesting. Okay. Um, so we're going to take... All of the... Misplaced... Experimental... Data... Hopefully I've got room for it. I actually do. And we're going to use even distribution to put it in here, 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 and here. That five seconds feels like an eternity, but I would rather not make a mistake again. Turn off auto trash. Uh, this goes here. Fantastic. Um, that five seconds really might be a little bit excessive. Okay, take that. And that. And I think we're good. There's a train coming with more nutrient fats. That might be a little bit premature. Then again, maybe not. Oh, no, don't, don't. How do I cancel it? I wish I could cancel it. Um, I think we'll set this to like two or three seconds. Two seconds is probably long enough for me, honestly. Um, and short enough to not be a nuisance. Uh, again. I gotta be a little bit more careful. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Fantastic. Except I forgot to pick up these extra ones that are in the wrong place. Uh, idea. Let's put all of this stuff back in the train. No. Uh. Okay, I guess that's going back to the, uh. Back to the depot and back to the mall to be recycled. That works, I suppose. Anyway, that's step one, and we need to do it over here as well. Um, so take. Well, let's do one resource at a time. All of the nutrient bats that are in the wrong place. I could get the spiders to deconstruct, but I don't. I really, really don't want to move the experimental genetic data around. Um, so I think that's the end of vats that are in the wrong place. Fantastic. And we need to do it again. For these ones. Nice. Now pick up the experimental data that's in the wrong place. There's a bit much of it. That is looking pretty good. Nice. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend I didn't see those five uh, nutrient fats. Uh, 
Perfect. Now we just have to train these belts a bit, I guess. So I'll pick this up until uh, until we see both types of items. Actually, we really don't need to do that there until well. Okay, let me just get these out of my inventory as much as I can, which is going to be not much by the look of it. Uh, I think we just consume from this belt until the combined belt reaches us. There'll be a bit more to fix if we expand this later on. I kind of want a train to come here just to have the cargo wagons sitting in place. Uh, we'll set this to inactivity five minutes. Probably be done by then. And then we can just bring items back to this train as we pick them off the belt. Where is our train? Here it comes. Fantastic. I might just set it to like passenger present or something. Something that isn't going to move until... Oh. That's okay as well. That, that effectively does the same thing. Uh, I need to change this back to half a second. A few seconds is starting to feel very, very long. Cool. Um, so, this belt is fixed. This belt is fixed, I think. There's some weird... Uh, mixed bits of belt, but it'll probably sort itself out. That one seems fine. And that one seems like it might be working now as well. Okay, bats go here. And... We can now fix the rest of these. Fantastic. Inventory is so full so quickly. It's mostly vats because that's what got here first. Okay, back to the train. Maybe I should have another train up here. I don't think it would make that much difference. Should I recycle scrap on Nalvis or in space? Uh, well, I'm doing both because we kind of have to. Um, but you can't use productivity modules for scrap, so it really doesn't matter. Wherever is most convenient for you. That's that one done. Fantastic. That's looking good. Makes sense. No worries. Let's put this back into the train. Alright, I'm going to go down to the end of this belt. this belt. Oh, that one's 
I keep forgetting how quickly these ones will fix themselves. Uh, that one's still not entirely fixed. Everything that we're adding to this should be on the right side of the belt, but there's a lot of stuff that wasn't already. Okay, let's fill our inventory with this. I should keep the jetpack on uh, for this particular task. Should be a lot faster. Oh, there we go. Hold again. And there's the end of that. Fantastic. Uh, inventory full. Not so fantastic. delivered here. Uh, more nutrient bats. That might be a good sign, actually. Inventory full. Oh, that's already... Am I carrying data cards? I am. Okay, that's why I was able to pick those up. Uh, while we're at it, I think I just want to double check this first. That goes there. There. Wait, what? Oh, there's two inserters aimed at picking up the Vitima lunch. I don't think that's necessary. Uh, let's see. 4.5 per second. Yeah, that's definitely not necessary. Okay. I was going to remove these extra bits of belt sticking out, but I think instead we'll just remove the top ones. And that'll be consistent and use up all the belt when we place this later. Is this getting full? Uh, a little bit. It might be enough. Just a little bit more. And I'm still not seeing those... Oh, there they go. Data cards. We're very close now. Well, that took a little bit of work to fix. If this is going to be overfilled, I'm just going to send it back to the uh, depot. Alright, I think we're good. And I've got some experimental genetic that I need to get rid of. Oh, did it perfectly, even with just a half second gap. Fantastic. Alright, so this should be working. Why isn't it working? 
because the last remnants of the messed up bit of belt are still over here. thought this would have stopped by now. What's going on? It looks okay up here. How many more things do we need to pick up here? Nope. just take these back to the hall. They get delivered there anyway. Just the occasional junk, uh, not junk. Just the occasional data card that's still on the right side of this belt. It's messing everything up. And it only takes a couple to block the inserters. Well, at least I was able to drop lots of those. Oh. I was also able to drop lots of nutrient fats. Still see some wayward data cards. Okay, I think this is done now. Nope, still got a little bit more. Every time I think it's over, that's the nanosecond that I see another data card in the wrong place. Okay, we seem to have fixed it at least up here. Here's an idea. Why don't we add this down here and we'll see if the machines stop. It's probably really, really excessive for our needs at the moment. But who cares? Is junk data getting where it needs to go? Looks like it. Oh, yeah. That's already a lot of throughput. What did we calculate this to? Three. Uh, we're going to do this three times. I think. Oh, I was going to do this over here. Um, so more like one... Two, three, four. Uh, four times this is. Yeah, just over four saturated belts. You know that you could just grab out of the side of the splitter? No need to put an extra belt below it? Out of the side of the splitter. Which one are we referring to here? Oh, this one? Oh, yeah, I just don't like the aesthetic of taking off the splitter, that's all. And we can see what's happening on that bit of belt as well. The mixed belt, yeah. Yeah, I gotcha. Alright, so none of these machines are stopping. Oh, this one? This one is lacking bio sludge. But the belt looks fine. Wait a sec, how much bio sludge do we have? 
We haven't run out yet. There's our first pickup of experimental biocultures. Fantastic. Yeah, we haven't run out of bio sludge yet, but it's not getting up here. 453 per second. That should be well within what can fit through these pipes. But the bio sludge here is already pretty much running out. Okay. Hmm. Well, if we've got two drop-offs for bio sludge, um, the limit is going to be how much bio sludge we can produce, not how quickly the trains can get here and stuff. So I don't think we have to worry there. And we've also got more bio sludge in the way. Fantastic. Is that another train picking up experimental bioculture already? It is. Nice. And here is our experimental biomass. Fantastic. That build's pretty simple. We don't have to worry about it breaking or anything. Oh, I did want to see... Damn, that loads fast. I did want to see uh, just how fast these inserters are with this layout with the belt, how satisfactory that is. Will pumping bio sludge out of the tanks help? Possibly. But when they're full enough, it shouldn't make a difference anyway. Uh, yeah, this looks fine. Oh, I forgot as well, this is, um, as it turns out, this is actually way less than half of a belt for the experimental bioculture. Good thing it's a short trip, uh, because these tiny stack sizes are really not great for trains. Alright, what's next then? We actually have gone that extra hour already. Let me just check something real quick. Zombie Kill Man? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, I think we are going to have to wrap up right about now anyway. We've already gone, what is it, eight hours? That's enough for me for one day, I think, usually. Um, let's see who is streaming Factorio 4 today. And maybe give someone a bit of a surprise. We got Sephanated, Tumbling Satellite, Time Flu, yeah, I mean it's space exploration, right? The Factory Must Grow, Zeke Death, who should we raid today? There's actually, like, too many choices. What time zone are you? Uh, plus 10, GMT plus 10. So, East Coast Australia. Alright. Why don't we give... Is this space exploration? No. Have a good one, Hex. Take care, Engie. Thanks for uh, dropping by. Anyone got any suggestions? I'm just going to pick one almost at random, if not. Have a good day, mate. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. And all this time I thought you were British. How dare you? 
We are not a meteorologist. <laughs> Alright, let's, uh... Cheers, Hex. Cheers, J4. Take care. Um, alright, how about... Uh... Seek death. Should be fine for today. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of the Blueprints if you're interested. If you have any questions or anything. If you want help figuring out a circuit, I love talking about that and uh, teaching. By all means, hit me up. And for now, let's drop in on Z Death.